Hello, hello everybody and welcome to today's tournament. It will be the copycat tournament. Yep, today we're going to be having a tournament about all the characters that were just uh, stand-ins for other characters between the series. Which means a lot of our favorite characters are going to be showing up today, like the person on the screen right now. So, I hope that everybody had a, has, has been having a good day. I hope everybody's ready. We're just going to have a little bit of a tournament today. If you're watching this on YouTube, do not be afraid to skip 15 minutes ahead to the first fight because right now we're in pre-stream mode on Twitch and we are just getting things together. So give me one second to set things up. There we go. All right, just need to put this together now. Welcome, Mark Gaming. Welcome. I hope you have fun today. Welcome, Nate Dog. I will be starting the stream in about 15 minutes. Right now, we're in pre-stream, and I'll be showing everyone the bracket and all that fun stuff. All right, let's see here. Just sending out my links right now. And we'll be able to get this started soon. Just let me get this all together now. But thank you for making it. Oh, Mark Gaming, thank you so much for being a sub, bud. I really do appreciate that. That is super kind of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope that uh, I hope that you have fun, and I hope that your favorite character shows up today. Because I know a lot of main characters are going to be in this tournament, since the copycat tournament will involve a lot of characters that uh, were basically replaced between the different series. Welcome, Yudo. Welcome, Night Trout. Happy to see you guys. Just let me... Uh, Get a few things settled real quick. What's up, Reaper? Not much. We're going to be having our tournament soon. I am currently just setting up. We're doing, uh, doing another copycat. What are you talking about? What's a co what's another copycat? Welcome, Alexi Bear. Oh, watching God of War. That's all good. I love my I love God of War. That game's super fun. Hey, Dream Clowns in chat. Heck yeah. Um, I did go see the One Piece Red movie, and I will not say much about it because I do not have much, I don't really have that many good things to say, I'm afraid. Was this planned, or were you just running late today? This was planned. If you had checked uh, my Twitch schedule, it's been up for about two days now, where every, every one of my Twitch streams were going to be at 2 p.m. I switch them based on when my sleep schedule needs to be switched, based on when new games are coming out. When new games come out, I usually switch my sleep schedule to a night schedule. That way I can play them immediately because they release at 9 p.m. for me. Uh, that was God of War, and this next week I'm going to be playing Scarlet and Violet. Um, I'm going to be playing Scarlet and Violet the second that game comes out, so I'm getting ready for that. Welcome, Frenzy Planted. I hope you have fun today. Welcome, Kyle Stacy. Things are going great today. I'm very excited to get started. Should be a good one. Oh, let's see. Welcome, everybody. Wow, everyone's showing up. Look at that. All right, there we go. Look at everyone showing up. That's freaking awesome. So yeah, we have a lot of uh, characters coming out. Oh, your uh, your girlfriend's playing Sonic Frontiers. That's a lot of fun. That is a lot of fun. That's one of the few uh, new games that I did not get. Hey, thanks for the cheer, Reaper. I appreciate that. I'm doing great, Nightbird. I'm doing great. All right. Almost ready to start. Just maybe one more link. After that link, I will uh, show you guys brackets and all that fun stuff. Which starter am I planning on getting for the new Pokemon? I am planning on getting <clears throat> Sprigatito. Because I love cats. Literally, in every Pokemon Let's Play I've done, I probably have had a cat Pokemon. So, I'm very excited for that. Oh, that's fun. I like I like the FNAF games. I don't play them personally, except the newest one, but uh, I do like them. 
First found you looking for Forbidden Memories. That is amazing. Hey, Young Deck, thank you so much for following. Uh, Forbidden Memories was my first ever Let's Play, guys. So that's pretty funny that you found me through that. Honestly, Forbidden Memories is one of my most favorite games to play, so I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to play Falsebound Kingdom, and that, guy, and that game Let's Play is just about over, basically. Um, I'm going to be moving on to a newer Yu-Gi-Oh game next, so that's a little spoiler for you guys here, but I will be doing a little bit of a newer Yu-Gi-Oh game next, which I'm excited to play. Yeah, I also picked Lydon before as well. That was my starter. Normally, my, I've never picked a water starter, but I always pick the fire or grass starter. Those I'm a big fan of. So, I'm, I, you know, I'm very happy to see that. Welcome, Corpse King. Uh, right now in God of War, I don't want any spoilers. All I could say is I'm up to a point where I'm in a magical forest and I'm playing as the boy. That's it. I don't want any spoilers. Hey, welcome, Laser. Welcome, everybody. Now, let's see here. It looks like we've made it to 150. Um, let me go ahead and show you guys the fighters today because we are going to have a decently sized tournament. You know, just a nice, a nice average size of your favorite characters. So here we go. For the copycat tournament, we will have Yami Yugi, the main character of any game. Versus Rex Godwin, Shark will be fighting Sartorius, Chaz Princeton will be fighting Cyrus Truesdale, Jaden Yuki will be fighting Yusei Fudo, My Valentine will be fighting Kotori, Jack Atlas will be fighting Kite, Maximilian Pegasus will be fighting Taya, Jesse Anderson will be fighting Bruno, Seto Kaiba will be fighting Zane, Kalin will be fighting Yuma, Vector will be fighting Yami Merrick, Alexis Rhodes will be fighting Ryo, Joey Wheeler will be fighting Sora, Akiza will be fighting Yuzu, Bastion Misawa will be fighting Reiji, and finally Yuya will be fighting Tron. So a lot of these characters are main characters and they're copycats from the future. Just like how, oh look at me, I'm Seto Kaiba, I have a three-headed dragon. Oh look at me, I'm Zane Truesdale, I also have a three-headed dragon. Oh look at me, I'm Jack Atlas, I have a dragon with exactly 3,000 attack, 2,500 defense. Just like every other main rival in the show. So. <laughs> yeah, that's basically how it's going to be. And Rex Godwin, it's like, hey, look at me. I'm the first villain. I'm like super creepy and whatnot. And it's like, hey, I'm Yami Merrick. I'm the first, I'm not the first villain, but I'm a bit like Pegasus, the first villain. And he's like, hey, I'm kind of creepy and what what, whatnot. All that kind of stuff. But I am excited for today's tournament. It should be pretty fun seeing these characters go at it. Yu-Gi-Oh! has a lot of creepy villains. That is 100% correct. 100% accurate. Yes, creepy villains all day. You thought I wouldn't stream today? I am very confused. No, like, I do have a schedule, guys. I, I have a schedule. Don't worry. If you ever feel like, hey, I thought there would be a stream at this time. If you check the schedule... 100% tells you whenever I'm streaming in your time zone, too. So whenever you're worried, don't worry. There, there's always a schedule. And the schedule will tell you when I am streaming. Taya is the best creepy villain? That's funny. Taya in the abridged series as Crump. Yes, I agree. <laughs> now, let's see. I've already <clears throat> I've already watched Ash vs. Leon. I've I actually really enjoyed it. That was a good time. Where is the schedule usually posted on Is does Twitch not have a schedule? Are you guys not on my homepage right now? Isn't there a schedule button on the homepage? Like it's one of the things that you could choose, like below the video? Am I crazy? Granted, I don't really use Twitch personally, so it is comp it, 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 I, I actually don't know. But I could swear that when you're on somebody's page, it lets you, like, look at, like, a schedule. And I always up to the schedule, like, three days before I, I plan on a stream. So if the day of of something, you're like, oh, there's always a, str a, tr a, st a stream on Saturdays, then you don't gotta worry. You don't have to worry. 
If you're like, oh, there's always a stream on Saturdays, we'll check the check on Saturday or two, Friday, Thursday, doesn't really matter. Check on those days and you're just like, oh, wait, there is a stream today. It's just two hours from now. Or, oh, there is a stream today, but it happened earlier and I accidentally missed it. Like, that, that happens all the time. All right, perfect. The world champ, Ash, yep. You have to go to the about schedule just to find my... Okay, wait. You have to go to the about section just to find my schedule? Okay. I don't blame anybody now. I thought there would just be a schedule button. Never mind. The fact that you have to go to the about se se section means that's really lame. But, you know another way to always know I'm streaming? I always release a YouTube... Uh, a, a video on YouTube saying, hey, I'm streaming on Twitch. That is the easiest way to know when I'm streaming. Because I'm assuming some of you guys have uh, notifications on on YouTube, and that probably saves you a lot of time. I actually have two different stream schedules. I have streams on at 12 p.m. and two, or 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Those are the two different stream schedules I go for. 12 p.m. is when I uh, have no new games coming out, which means I can uh, sleep in uh, sleep early, and I can go to bed like around 9:10. But when new games are coming out, I have to flip my schedule to where I wake up very late because the new games come out at 9 p.m. for me. So I sw I've moved the tournaments to 2 p.m. Yeah, I'm honestly happy for Ash too. I was sad that Cynthia lost, but at the same time, after watching his fight, I was like, you know what? That was a really nice fight. I was a big fan. All right, let's see. Twenty-five years to accomplish your dream is not that long, honestly. It is not that long. I can tell you right now, I still haven't accomplished my exact dream. Hey, what's up, Big Smoke? Good to see ya. All right, I'm setting up the first fight for today. It's going to be Rex Godwin versus good old-fashioned Yami Yugi. The king of goddamn games. The guy who cheats. Cooper, who's your vote to win? Uh, between these two characters, always, always Yugi. I actually, funny enough, since Dimitri is in the game, I plan to use him in place of Jaden as the copycat character. But then when I saw that he only has Jaden decks, he doesn't have a Yugi deck, he doesn't have all that, I was just like, what the hell? Do the people that made Dimitri not even watch the show? He should have had a Crowler deck, a Yugi deck, and a Jaden deck. It would have made way more sense. But in this game, they really cheaped out and just gave him Jaden deck. And it's like, what the hell? This tournament is simply characters and their copycats from the future. Much like how Yami Yugi was chained by J Ch uh, changed into Jaden Yuki. Changed into Yusei Fudo, changed into Yuya, changed into Yu, uh, um, Yuma into Yu, Yuya, Seto Kaiba into Zane Truesdale into um, Jack Atlas into Kite, I assume. I don't, I didn't watch Zexel. <laughs> it's like, I did not watch Zexel. All that fun stuff. And I don't think there is a copycat in uh, Arc 5 in the very beginning, because there literally is no... Well, maybe it's Ragey, possibly? I don't know. I really don't know. Alright, let's see. I have the predictions basically ready to go. I'm going to show them off right now. But let me go ahead and show you your first fighters, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Your first fighters will be Yama Yugi versus Rex Godwin. The Ash versus Leon fight? Eh. I liked when Ash's uh, Mega Lucario got knocked out due to a Dragon Tail. Like, a surprise dragon tail into something. It was like, wow, I couldn't believe Cynthia could not knock out this Pokemon when it was so easy for Leon. Who's my vote to win this entire tournament? That's, that's kind of hard. 
<laughs> a lot of these characters are actually like champions, so I really don't know what to tell you on that one. That's that's actually kind of difficult. But we'll see how 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 it goes today. The bets are going to come in, don't you worry. The bets are going to come in. All right. Let's go ahead and everyone that came early today, place your bets. Do you believe Yami Yugi, the King of Games, will wreck Rex Godwin, or do you believe in the underdog Rex Godwin, who will summon his uh, Sun and Moon Dragon and maybe even his Earthbound Immortal? Personally, I say the King of Games can't be stopped. He has been stopped before, but he is a multiple tournament winner and is really amazing. If Cooper vote, vote wins the tournament, shit. All right, well, if that's the case, I'll show you the bracket. We'll check the bracket after this. But we already know that Yugi's going to win this personal duel. All right, so here we go. Rex Godwin versus Yama Yugi. Rex shall open the duel, and let's see what he's got. Rex already has his Mausoleum of the Emperor and uses it to special or to normal summon his Oracle of the Sun. In attack mode, which is a terrible position, Yugi plays an even worse makes an even worse play by playing Raigeki. Honestly, I did not expect that. Why would he use that? Why? Okay, and he uses his own card against him to get Raigeki back, and Yami Yugi, I realized why you use Raigeki now. Because you wanted a spell in the graveyard, so I'm not even upset. And we have Oracle of the Sun yet again, but this time with Fire Ant Ascator. And just like that, Rex Godwin is back in control. Because Yugi's monster only has 2,800, and Rex's has 3,000 with the Sun God Dragon in T. And he special summons the Ghost Ship. And he special summons the Ghost Ship. The King of Games is in trouble. He loses his best mo one of his best monsters. And Karibo saves his life points. But he still loses life points. The King of Games is in a little bit of trouble. Yes, he has Raigeki, but is the AI bad or is it going to actually use it again? I used it again. Not good for him. Not like the Sun God Carry. And Magician's Valkyria comes on out to do some damage. Sorry to hear that, Curve 50 Alien. That sucks. Alright, we have a set into a pass, and it looks like Yami Yugi is in control. And Yugi pays 2,000 life points to summon his legendary Dark Magician. The legendary Dark Magician is here, and it destroys the Supe. And it destroys the life points of Rex Godwin. It looks like uh, Rex Godwin is going to lose, but he has a destiny draw of his own. He summons the Akatekul. I, I don't actually know how to pronounce that. And it gets, okay, it gets a destruction. And he's got a trap ready to go. Yugi, this is for everything. This turn decides the duel. You play skilled Dark Magician. You have Heavy Storm destroying the Destiny Drew trap card. And he's got Black Luster Soldier. There is nothing in his way anymore. The King of Games with Heavy Storm, BLS, all the bullshit. Literally destroys the Destiny Draw and ends the duel. The King of Games. Very low life points, but he did it. All of you that bet on Yugi, good on you. All right, let's take another look at our bracket, and I will predict on who's going to win. All right, looking at all these characters, my guess is... Uh... Jaden Yuki and his masked hero deck. Let's say he's going to win. All right, let's go ahead and set the next duel. It's going to be Shark versus Sartorius. Right. Let's see. I'm all ready to start this duel, everybody. Let me just get the predictions ready. Remember, I need a little extra time on Twitch streams for the predictions. All right, everybody, place your bets, place your bets. It's time to start the duel. Place your bets. 
It's time for Shark versus Sartorius. Alright, second coin toss is a great start for Sartorius, but no monsters is a horrible start. Okay, and he's got Spear Shark with Shark Stickers to start the duel. He also has Aqua Jet, making his Spear Shark extremely powerful. However, Temperance will play as Karibo and stop the damage. We have a trap card, but still no monster to his name. Shark is in complete control of the duel. Everybody say hello to Big Jaws. We have an XYZ summon. It's gonna be his legendary monster. Shark summons the Leviathan Dragon. And Leviathan Dragon now has 2,500 attack. But another Temperance. No wonder your hand was a brick. You drew two of those. Another Temperance will stop the damage, but Sartorius is still really, really in trouble, given his opponent has two humongous monsters coming after him. And he draws rank up magic, his legendary spell card, in order to summon the strongest card in his deck. Everyone say hello to Chaos number 101. It is the Silent Honor Arc. Or Dark, sorry, not Arc. That looks like GG to me. And Sartorius gets absolutely destroyed without summoning a single monster. Goodbye, Sartorius. Honestly, when your opponent draws that natural seventh one, it's super brutal. It's super brutal. All right, let's take another check at our bracket, everybody. The next duel is Chazzy Boy, Chaz Princeton, and his Arm Dragon deck versus Cyrus Truesdale. Alright, place your bets, everybody. Celta, thank you so much for gifting even more subs. I hope you guys have fun with that. And I hope you enjoy your emotes you get to use, especially uh, God Said No, that one's always fun. Alright, let me just set up the next duel real quick. Chazzy Boy and Cyrus Truesdale. Alright, place your bets, people. Place your bets. Do you believe in Mr. Roids or do you believe in Mr. Arm Dragon? Here we go. We're all set up here. It's time to get started, everybody. It's time for Cyrus versus Chaz. Let's get it going. Welcome, Ghost Wolf. Alright, Cyrus Truesdale is going to start this off, and let's see what he does. Cyrus has a set set pass. I'm going to check the bets on this one, because this one seems like it'll be a longer duel, given that it's two GX characters. Um, Cyrus only has 34% of the votes, and has the highest vote from Kyle, or second highest vote from Kyle Stacy at 3.4k. Chaz has 66% of the vote and has the highest vote from Shadow J at 5k. However, it seems like a good Steamroid. It's funny, Steamroid in defense mode is actually better than you'd think. And we're going to go ahead and get Submarine Roid out here. Steamroid can rip apart the Flying Kamikiri, but honestly, that's not going to help out too much. And the Flying Kamikiri will turn into Arm Dragon level 3. The AI doesn't suck. Thank God he actually summoned Arm Dragon level 3. And now all he has to do is special summon Arm Dragon level 5. And he does just that. Arm Dragon level 5 is here. Chaz has one of his best cards. He's got level up. Charm Dragon level 7 is here, everybody. And Arm Dragon level 7 destroys everything on the field and goes in for 2800 direct damage. That looks like death to me. And Dark Hole from Cyrus is pretty brutal, gets rid of the problematic monsters. But Cyrus is bricked, that is sad. Pot of Avarice kicks in, everybody. And that gives, wow, he already had six monsters in the grave. Monster Abort can bring back the Steamroid for 1800 damage, that's something. Alright, Cyrus is already below half and Chaz seems to be in complete control. 
Hey, thank you, Vidal, and I hope you enjoy your gift, Ghost Wolf. Vidal, you've given 22 subs, and you deserve all of the praise. Thank you so much. But Cyrus is not giving up. He draws his legendary spell card with the chain material combo to summon his vehicle. Ro Dest oh, wow, he summoned this one this time. Super Vehicle Roy Jumbo Drill, which cannot be destroyed by uh, Chain Material's effect because the Vehicle Roy Protection protects it. However, Chaz uses Brain Control, and that's going to be the end of the duel. That's going to be it, everybody. He had a great card, but it doesn't make a damn difference. The Vehicle Roy had one turn more. Wait a minute! Kite Roid! Kyroid saves the day! Kyroid saves Cyrus! He can get his Reikoroid back! And that means he's in complete control of the duel! And just like that, Cyrus has complete control and is destroying his opponent. And thanks to his piercing damage, Chaz only has two turns left at best. Flying Kamakiri is here. He's got Creature Swap! He steals it again! And Cyrus Truesdale is getting out of here! The winner will be... I'm waiting just in case he has another kite. Chaz Princeton takes out Cyrus with the Creature Swap of the Gods. Literally super close. Chaz Princeton. Barely clutching it there against Cyrus. Chaz it up, everybody. Chaz it up. Or if you're a sub fan, Manjome Thunder. All right, so Chaz, you are a winner. The next fight is two main characters going at it. It will be Jaden Yuki versus Yusei Fudo. setting it up right now. Everyone, place your bets. Place your bets. Place them while you have the chance. This is Masked Hero Jaden. Masked Hero Jaden. Chaz did not summon Arm Dragon level 10, but he did steal his opponent's best, well, one of his best cards. You're not choosing between two main protags because they don't have... How does protagonist power work on protagonist power? It doesn't. They actually just have to straight up win the duel. Alright, let's see here. And let's go ahead and get the duel started, everyone. It's time for protagonist versus protagonist. It's time for Junk uh, Warrior and Stardust Dragon to take on Masked Heroes. I'm actually curious about this bet, so let's see what happens. 22 subs, Vidal. 22 subs. All right. Jaden Yuki has 38% of the vote and only a second highest bet of 5k from Shadow J. However, Yusei has 62% of the vote and a humongous bet from Ghost Wolf at 13k. MST will start the duel to pop mass change number two, which is a huge loss for Jaden. And he special summons his level eater. He also summons Junk Synchron and Synchro summons Armory Arm. And Wing Karibo dies, but that doesn't matter at this point in the game. Alright, Jaden, let's see what you got. E Emergency Call could get you a Stratos. Or a Bla Yeah, I like Blaze Man too if you got a fusion. Blaze Man, yes. Okay. Do you have what I think you have, Jaden? I mean, every goddamn card in your deck fuses, so you know. And with Stratos, he fuses into good old... Okay, he loves summoning this card for some reason. Great Tornado. And now it's Fusion versus Synchro, and it looks like the Fusion is not going to do a damn thing because Scrap Iron says no. And now Armory Arm could still do its effect if it needs to. But Yusei realizes that he's just in trouble. Jaden needs more than one monster, though, to... Nope! Jaden needs more than one monster, though, or he'll never get past the Scrap Iron Scarecrow. However, he can form change. That is a thing he can do. And Mass Koga can come in for the second attack to get rid of the Armory Arm, which means he has no risk of a quip. 
However, you say Fudo Dark holds the fusion, and his final monster to Breeze Dragon comes in with Synchron Carrier. That was a hell of a top deck from Yusei Fudo. However, Jaden Yuki has nothing! He doesn't have the same powers as Yusei. Yusei is truly a main character. Alright, Jaden, you really need to pull out a monster. And you still can't pull out a monster! What is up with your masked hero deck? Jet Synchron, Debris Dragon, go on in. MST comes in and does not destroy the Scrap Iron Scarecrow. You idiot, that Scrap Iron should have been your target. And the Tuner Beatdown shall continue because Jaden, for the love of his life, cannot draw a single monster card. Where is your Blaze Man? Where is your Shadow Mist? Where is your Strato? A Destiny draw is more like a Destiny Brick for Jaden. He is basically throwing the duel, but Yusei has not drawn another monster, which means he will not lose just yet. It looks like Yusei is going to win this duel with a bunch of tuners and a Dark Hole. He finally draws a monster, it is Blazeman, but what does that matter? Our Righteous Justice will destroy the Scrap Iron, which is actually a really good target. But he had Mirror Force! He actually just straight up had Mirror Force! Mass Change, I don't think this saves you. Oh, you're not in attack mode. Yes, it does save you. And Form Change, still battle phase, gives him Vapor, and Vapor goes in. Jaden, this is your last play, so it better count for something. All right, that was Jaden's last play, everybody. And okay, it looks like it'll work out. Yusei doesn't have a synchro option, but Jaden doesn't have a second monster. It seems to be his deck's weakness. Monster Aborn kicks in to bring back Quick Draw. That's a level five tuner. Does his other monster have a low? Yes, it does. That can make a level seven monster. What level seven monster do you want? It's Junk Archer. Junk Archer can totally win this duel right now! Junk Archer uses its effect and he loses his monster! Jaden is wide open for an attack and he summons his legendary Stardust Dragon! Nothing can stop you, say, from destroying Jaden! I can't believe it! I immediately lose this- I voted for him and I immediately lose. Stardust Dragon, do your job! All right, and Quilbolt. Wow, okay, he's just summoning a bunch of monsters for fun, I guess. Stardust goes in, and there's nothing Jaden can do. The winner is Yusei. Yeah, that was a really one-sided protagonist duel there. I felt like Jaden was just trying to catch up, trying to draw monsters there. Yusei Fudo, on the other hand, did amazing. All right, the next duel, everybody. Also, congratulations, Ghost Wolf. The next duel, everybody, will be my Valentine versus Katori. Both of these characters are champions. Let's see what happens. Another gift has been given. Thank you so much, Vidal. All right, everybody, place your bets, place your bets. I will set up the duel right now. And I am ready to start the duel, everybody. It's Harpy Ladies versus Agents. Let's go. Katori was the victor of the representative tournament, I believe in season two or three. I can't remember. I think it was season two of the world tournament. And my Valentine was the winner of the Pyramid of Light tournament, I believe. So, pretty good. From both of them. Alright, Katori starts off with a set, my Valentine starts off with a Harpy Harpist, and goes in for some damage. I bet you she will Elgin Egotist on main phase 2 because she doesn't know how to use her deck. 
And honestly, I wish. I wish I could change the programming. I wish I knew how to do that, just to make it so they use spell cards on main phase one. It's like, hey, why don't you do Monster Aborn, Elegant Egotist, uh, probably other spells I'm not thinking of, Ancient Rules on main phase one. Katori starts off with a very good monster here because she could summon a lot of uh, monsters with this effect. There we go. Keep doing it, Katori. You know you need them. Alright, and that's a lot of monsters. Are you going to do anything else? You have another agent, okay. And we have an XYZ summon, everybody. Say hello to... What the hell is that? Number 49, Fortune Tune. That card is super weak. Why does, the, why does she have it? That's the first time she summoned that. An XYZ with 400 attack, 900 defense? And here's a Harpy Channeler, everyone. Will she actually use its effect, though? And BioCycle Wolf, thank you so much for your sub. We're actually almost at our goal. We have reached 41 subscriber points. We are literally only fi oh, uh, 9 subs away from our goal. That's freaking awesome. Icarus Attack kicks in and destroys the back row. Divine Wrath is gone. And the Harpy Lay Sisters destroys everything but the Exceed Monster. What is this thing? This card cannot be targeted by card effects. If this card face card would be destroyed, you can detach XYZ material. Oh yeah, that could be a problem. And Celtic gives out another sub, everybody. You all have created the hype train. Thank you so much. And just like that, the agent with United We Stand destroys the Harpy Lady Sisters. Thank you so much. We have eight more subs to go. Either way, I'm happy with this. That's enough. And Harpy Harpist goes in, can't destroy the monster. And my Valentine is as good as screwed. And there we go, everybody. The damage is coming through. 3,400 attack. My Valentine is screwed. Harpy Lady 1 is dead. Only 400 damage on that one, so that doesn't matter as much. Harpy Harpers kicks in, giving her a channeler, which could be good if, you know, her opponent didn't have all this crazy stuff. Monster Aborn brings back Hecatrice, which is the worst choice. I don't know why. And Harpy Chandler is now here. But Hecatrice was literally the worst choice. I can't even imagine why anyone would pick that. She does have a trap card, though, so we'll see. And Icarus Attack can't target much, but it can get rid of the United We Standed monster. She heals 500 life points and ends her turn. And Graceful Charity is coming in! Graceful Charity, she summons Harpy Harpist, Hecatrice is in attack mode, and Mai for the first time is actually is not, yeah, is in control of the duel. Elegant Egotist on main phase 2 again, just to piss me off, but I will try to calm myself, it does not matter. Hecatrice in attack mode also makes no sense, why is Katori playing that in attack mode? I actually just thought of why. Harpy Lady 1, and no, she doesn't have Honest! That was the only reason I could think of doing that. And just like that, Katori is about to lose the duel! My Valentine just destroyed Katori! Alright. I saw some pretty bad plays here and there, but honestly, that's AI in general, so no problems there. And My Valentine is our victor, despite having less votes. All right, let's go ahead and move into the next duel. The next duel will be Jack Atlas versus Kite. All right, everyone, place your bets, place your bets. Jack and Kite are going at it. And thank you yet again, Vidal, for the sub. That is 24 subs just from Vidal in the past, well, entirety of my channel. Either way, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, buddy. And Jack Atlas is there. We are now only seven subs away from the goal. That's going to be freaking awesome. I hope Jack Atlas does well in this duel. I like him more than Kite, but Kite's monsters are a lot stronger than Jack's. Jack's always called himself a powerhouse, but Kite is the true powerhouse. 
but Kite does brick more often than Jack, so we'll see. Let's go ahead and get this started, guys. Jackie Boy versus Kite. Place your bets, place your bets. You got 15 seconds left. I'll check the bets in a second. Let me just see what we got. All right, looking at the bets, Kite has 46% of the vote. It's a pretty close bet. Uh, with a very tiny vote from Kyle Stacy at 3k. Jack is 54% with also a tiny vote from Ghost Wolf at 4.5k. And Traden starts the duel, which is always a nice start, except when you don't draw a monster from Traden. And the Master of Faster uses Resonator Call to get his favorite card, the Dark Resonator. He also uses the Dark Resonator immediately to do some damage. All right, Kite uses Dark Hole because he doesn't want to deal with the dark uh, with that monster, and Galaxy Zeros is Galaxy Tyranno, and he also special summons Galaxy Knight, and just like that, we have an XYZ summon, everybody, and this is it. And we have an evolution on XYZ summoning, everybody. Say hello to the uh, full armor Photon Dragon. Jack Atlas Fiendish Chains and makes it so its effect is negated, and it's basically just a big wall. Jack Atlas then summons the Cloud. Or uh, Clock, I mean. Oh god, another Galaxy Knight comes out, and Galaxy Knight has Galaxy Expedition to summon the third Galaxy Knight. And an XYZ, oh no, a Tribute Summon for Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon equals a good old Galaxy Ice Photon Dragon. Or uh, Galaxy Eyes Prime Photon Dragon. 4,000 attack is coming towards Jack, but Primeful Roar kicks in! Jack pays 2,800 life points, but he will win the fight! No, he will not! The effect activates, and he wins the fight! Jack barely defeats his opponent. Just barely. Big Smoke, thank you so much for that. I appreciate the cheer. And we have a Tribute Summon of Endless Decay, which is based on half of your opponent's life points. That's going to do 3,200, leaving Kite with almost nothing. Jack literally beats an overpowered monster by paying life points to power up his clock. And now Kite gets to Destiny Draw into Photon Sanctuary, but does he have Tribute Monster? He does not. Uh-oh. He just needed a Tribute Monster, but he did not have one. And Jack got himself another Dark Resonator. Dark Resonator is coming in. Oh no, he's got Flare Resonator instead. Interesting choice. And with Flare Resonator, he Synchro summons himself a manga version of the Red Demon's Dragon. And it has 3300 attack, just like that. Look at this, guys. Look at this power. And Resonator Call comes in again for the final Dark Resonator. And he summons the second one now. Daemon's Dragon destroys the defense mode monster. Dark Resonator gets some damage in. Kite is in danger. Kite breaks and that is it! The Master of Faster takes him out with his Synchro Summon. All of those Exceed Summons meant nothing compared to the Master of Faster Jack Atlas. He takes him out. And Amon with the Mega 10 Gifts! Holy shit, we met our goal, everybody! Amon saves the day, and with that, we have met our goal of 50 subs! Hell yeah! Thank you all so much! Master of Faster clutches it, and everybody gets to reap the rewards. Amon, you are our biggest gifter of the day by far. Thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Jackie boy, you move forward and everybody wins. The hype train shall continue. The next duel of the tournament will be a nice old DM match. It's going to be Maximilian Pegasus versus Taya Gardner. Place your bets, everybody. Place your bets. Taya versus Maximilian Pegasus. I am very excited for this duel. I want to see everybody place your bets. Who do you think could truly win this one?
Now, where the hell is Taya's deck hiding? Remember, Taya uses the Dark Magician Girl uh, with um, Sage's Stone combo. Um, she has a lot of equip spells. She likes equip spells. Now, let's see here. I need Pegasus, and we all know Pegasus has his tunes, Thousand Eyes Restrict, all that fun stuff. He's won a tournament. He's actually gone pretty far in multiple tournaments now, you know. He's more impressive than we thought. You want to see me use a face cam? You need to give me some time. My body is still not ready. My mind isn't either. I'm very self-conscious, as you guys should know. Alright, here we go. Taya versus Pegasus. Pegasus will be starting off our duel. Does he have the Toon Kingdom? Well, he will now if he doesn't. So, Toon Table of Contents will search through his deck and get him what he needs. And he uses all of his Toon Table of Contents to get him the Toon Kingdom he desperately needs. And with that, he gets himself a Toon Mermaid, Graceful Charities after summoning it, which is fine because it's a special summon, and summons the Toon Goblin Attack Force. And we have a skilled Dark Magician with a Mage Power, uh-oh. And with that, oh, and a Bound Wand, uh-oh. The damage is going up, and she's got 3,800 attack, but Spirit Barrier says go to hell. Literally going to hell. And Dark Hole kind of ruins the combo there. Bound Wand can make him come back, and honestly, Pegasus misplayed. Without a monster, he doesn't get Spirit Barrier's effect, which means this damage will be dealt. And she's not done! She has more damage! Oh god, my breath. <clears throat> oh no! The Magician Circle ruined it! She can't even damage him! All she could do is she got rid of Mirror Force. Okay, hold up. She hit Mirror Force, everybody. She hit Mirror Force. And Lightning Vortex from Pegasus destroys everything! Gemini Elf will force her to thro throw away a card. Everything is going away, guys. It is honestly crazy. And just like that, Pegasus is in complete control of the duel. And what other card is... She lost Chaos Sorcerer. That is one of her be uh, best cards, and it's gone. She lost Magician's Valkyria. That is her only chance to lock the opponent, and it's gone. Pegasus is in complete control, and he summons Toon Dark Magician Girl and Toon Cannon Soldier. Obviously, Toon Cannon Soldier can't attack just yet, but the Dark Magician Girl's effect says she can. Taya has one last turn to do something. This is for all the marbles, everybody. And her last turn is spent summoning Magician's Valkyria and probably attacking to make him throw away a card. And Monster Aborn is her final card, which is a Toon Monster, which means he can't attack directly! Taya did it! She took advantage of the Toon's negative effect, where they can't attack directly unless there, uh, if there's another Toon on the field. An Apprentice Magician may die, but that just gives Taya Magician of Faith. Taya, with the 100 IQ play, or two, sorry, 200 IQ play, keeps herself in the duel. And now she summons Magician's Valkyria, and Pegasus is locked. Pegasus is locked down. Toon Kingdom saves his monster, and Toon Kingdom saves his monster. Everybody, enjoy your level 3 hype train emotes. I hope you all, you all earned them. You all seriously earned them. But by Taya attacking, she forced her Toon into defense mode, which does not matter, everybody. Because, honestly, he would have just... Oh, wow. Yeah, she would have destroyed it by crashing either way. But the direct attack will end the duel. And just like that, Taya Gardner is out of here. Again, I want to thank everybody for this hype train. We had so much fun. I, had, I really enjoyed it, obviously. And that was a great time. Pegasus has defeated Taya, to nobody's surprise. It was actually a pretty good duel in the end. All right, so let's go ahead and see. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm glad these two ended up together in the bracket. This should be fun. So the next duel is Jesse Anderson and Bruno. These two duelists are basically the people that show up a little late into the shows and are end up being the best friends of the main character. Jesse, the best friend of Jaden. Bruno, the best friend of Yusei.
Jaden literally went through his own emo phase because of what happened to Jesse. And Yusei found his best friend in Bruno. Mr. Anderson, you got that right. Alright, let me find Jesse really quick, and I'll find Bruno just as quick. Everyone place your bets, place your bets. Let's see who's gonna win it. Alright, it's funny too, because they're both blue-haired boys. Look at that. They're just both blue-haired guys. They show up and they're just like, hey, I'm your best friend now. Alright, here we go everybody, it's time, Jesse Anderson versus Bruno, another gift, 25 gifts, coming in from Vidal, thank you so much buddy, I miss you honestly, <laughs> it's been a while, but I know you gotta support Wookie, I know you gotta build him up and I appreciate that, I'm trying to do that too, we started a One Piece Let's Play, and we have a set pass, okay everybody, and just like that, we have Crystal Beast Sapphire Pegasus, which gives him uh, Carbuncle. And welcome, Louise. Happy to see you. And just like that, we have Gen X Neutron, which if it survives, which it did, it gets Gen X Controller. All right, I'm going to check the bets right now. Looking at the bets, Jesse only has 26% of the vote. Ghost Wolf has the second highest bet at 5k. Bruno has a massive 74% of the votes and has 11k from Amon. But Jesse actually got Sapphire Pegasus this duel, which is super good. And we have Crystal Beacon, which will special summon another Pegasus, which could get him another monster. He chooses the Tiger. And Rare Value gets rid of Pegasus. And Rare Value gets rid of Carbuncle. And Crystal Blessing brings him back. What a way to play. I know Arnold. Sw I love these guys' voices in the, in the dub. The fact that all of his guys get funny dub voices is great. The dub was just an abridged series in itself. Everyone, if you've only watched GX uh, sub, you need to watch it dub. It's literally like watching professional. Well, not professionals, but watching it. It's like watching an abridged series, basically. And Topaz Tiger does a lot of damage to Bruno, and Bruno is left wide open and will not survive the turn unless that trap card saves him. This is for all the marbles, and it looks like Jesse Anderson will win his duel on turn six. That might be a record for the day, and that is a big upset in the votes. I know, it's like he actually played Yu-Gi-Oh for once. And that is the deck the game gave him, that is not touched by me. Alright, let's go ahead and set this up. Jesse Anderson will move forward. And the next duelist going at it. Oh, I want to see everybody take place in this duel. This is going to be a high fast duel. We have Seto Kaiba versus Zane Truesdale. Everybody place your bets. I want to see it. I want to see the love. Literally, the love. Duel of the two of the worst brains in the game, but two of the most high-powered decks in the game. Obviously, Zane has probably the highest power deck in the game, but um, Seto Kaiba's no chump. He's got really high-powerful monsters, too. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and start this duel. Place your bets while you still have a chance, but it is time. All right. They both have three-headed dragons. Let's see if we'll see them today. Oh, the bets are coming in. I'm going to go check them out real quick. Zane starts with a basic set set pass, nothing wrong with that. The bets are in. Seto Kaiba has a mere 38% of the vote and Zane Trusto has 62%. But we do have a tie in bets. Hipster Hypster bet 5k on Seto Kaiba, whereas Laser bet 5k on Zane. Alright, Voice Raider starts the duel and does its job. And Cyber Dragon is here with Cyber Repair Plant. 
giving him another cyber dragon. And Power Bond is here! This could end the duel! A card strong enough to end the duel. This is literally for game right now. Cyber Twin Dragon will try to end this duel with 5,600 attack. Unless Kaiba started with a bested Brack Row, this duel is over. It is super over! Zane Truesdale on turn three and earns a victory! Kaiba, get out of here! Yep, sometimes you just, like, 1900 beaters are nice, but how about 2100 attack point monsters that you could special summon into all of this bullcrap? Just slaughtered the man. Alright, I love it. Use the emote in, uh, everyone's using the emote in chat of Kaiba just getting obliterated. Because that's exactly what happened. Obliteration. Alright, the next duel will be Kalin Kessler using the highest level deck I could find that the game gives him versus Yuma. Alright, Yuma. Let's go ahead and get this uh, set up, everybody. Kalin and Yuma are ready to go. Let's go ahead and start the duel. The bets are in too. Or the bets are starting too. So go ahead, everybody. Yuma and Kalin. And Yuma starts the duel with Onomatopoeia. Don't ask me. I don't really know these cards very well or at all. And he's got Go 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 Giant with a bunch of back row. However, Talon's got Foolish Burial to throw away Infernity Avenger and places every single card in his hand face down. One of those cards being Infernity Break. I would have waited. Heavy Storm! That was the highest value Heavy Storm I've ever seen. And Zubaba Knight has an open field. Kalin, literally the master of top decks, has to prove why he's the master of top decks. And he just has a set. Damn. And there. Alright, let's see what we got here. We just have a set. It looks like he really he's the king of top decks, but what is he gonna do? Go 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 golem is here. That's a lot of damage. I will check the bets. Let me see. The bets are in. Kellen has a mere 4.7k from Kyle Stacy. Yuma has a really big bet from Ghost Wolf at 10k. Alright. Yuma's in complete control of the duel. What can Kalan even do? Kalan has a trap card to try and save him, but let's see if it makes a difference. The damage comes in, and it looks like Kalan's about to lose the duel to Yuma. One heavy storm changed everything. That was it. He needed to top deck it for any Avenger. That was like the only thing that could save him. Alright. Just like that, Yuma destroys his opponent. The next duel will be Vector versus Yabi Merrick, everybody. The leader of the Barians, basically, versus the leader of the Rare Hunters. Funny enough, their duelist went at it, and it turns out the Rare Hunters ma uh, 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 beat the Barians. Bandit Keith took out Alito in the last tournament. He's not the leader of the Barians? I could have swore he was. Never mind. Shark's the leader? Ah, really him? He doesn't even have like an evil looking deck though. That's lame. Well, Vector's as close as we're gonna get then, because look at this. Shark's on the other side of the bracket. And Yami Merrick is right here.
All right, guys, I am ready to start the duel. Let's go ahead and get things going. It's time for Yami Merrick versus Vector. Miss Hanamaru, uh, Hanamura, thank you so much for the uh, follow. I really do appreciate that. And I hope you enjoy the tournament. Duel Monsters villain versus a Zexel villain. Let's see who's going to do good. Yeah, thank God that YouTube tournament did not have bets because nobody would have bet Bones to go all the way and nobody would have bet Bandit Keith to beat freaking Alito. Dawn Thousand's Throne. Uh-oh. I don't even know what that is, but it sounds scary. And Sangan is here from Yami Merrick to go in and destroy the Umbral Horror. But Safe Zone says no, but I think you still take the damage. I think that was the worst use of Safe Zone I've ever seen. And the Horror Wolf summons another one. And why is it attacking it? You just helped Merrick. You gave him a new monster. He chose Wall of Illusion. Interesting. That would defeat the safe zone, I think. Alright, now he summons his giant germ and new Doria because his opponent made a horrible play where now he's going to take a lot of damage. And Yami Merrick is still in complete control of the duel even though his opponent is healing. Okay, we have Gorgonic Cerberus. That's a new looking card, but honestly, it doesn't matter because Magic Cylinder says go to hell. Kind of a low, you know, low damage Magic Cylinder, but we'll take it. Uh-oh. No, I'm fine. That's just the AC controller. A Baki! Oh, another burn card comes through, and it looks like Merrick doesn't want the monster. He wants your life points. Merrick is just going after his... Oh, ceasefire! The duel is over! Merrick burns the opponent. And just like that, Merrick Ishtar defeats his opponent in seven turns. Dawn Thousand, more like Dawn Dead. Yami Merrick, you move forward. It's time, everybody, for Alexis Rhodes going up against Rio. Alexis versus Rio. Now, I we already saw Alexis win another tournament with her world champion deck. Today, she's using a champion deck, she, her Cyber Angel deck, which did win a tournament. But it's not the world champion deck. That would be a little too much. I can't let her win two tournaments in a row like that. Unless she wins with this one again. Then that'd be kind of crazy. All right, let me go ahead and set this up, guys. Rio versus Alexis. Place your bets, people. Place your bets. Place your bets. Rio is the penguin girl, for those of you that have forgotten, from Zexel. She uses winged beast cards and penguins. Let's go ahead and start this duel, everybody. It's time for Alexis versus Rio. Let's get it going. Cyber Angels versus Penguins. It's the Tag Force 3 Angel deck, the one that she used to win a tournament. Tag Force 3, not Tag Force 7. The Tag Force 7 one is ass. And Sonic Bird to start the duel is really good. Especially if she can pull it off immediately, but she can't. No penguin is dead, but I think she likes that in the. De I think she likes that card in the graveyard. Blizzard Falcon is now here, and it can easily destroy a Sonic Bird. Two birds going at it, and the Blizzard Falcon wins. Ice beats flying, obviously. And Alexis, despite having her spell card, does not have her monster or the proper cards to summon it. Swallow's Nest is a little weird, and Magic Drain says go to hell. However, she throws away Salvage in order to make sure it works. And Blizzard Thunderbird is here. Also, so is Mother Grizzly. 
Sandia may be dead, but that just means Alexis gets a morphing jar. Really, a morphing jar of all things. I don't know about that one, Alexis, but you know what? To each their, to each their own. Everyone say hello to Ragna Zero. Alexis summons Senju of the Thousand Hands, which guarantees her her uh, boss monster if she has the stars. And she does have the stars, which means we're going to see it, everyone. Say hello to Cyber Angel Dakini, which makes your opponent pop themselves. And just like that, Ryo is left wide open. Alright, Ryo, you have your destiny draw. It better count for something because that Takiti does piercing damage. And MST pops the TT! The Toriental Tribute Destiny Draw is gone! She had MST waiting for her. Manju will get her another Dakini, but does she have another spell card? Virus, thank you so much for being a sub, bud. But the Penguin Soldier, even though the piercing comes through, the Penguin Soldier can remove from play two of these monsters. And she had to pick those two to save herself. Honestly, she didn't, but she didn't know. It's not her fault. Alright guys, this is her final turn. She needs an next seat summon, but she doesn't have one. Dakini doing piercing damage could easily win this duel. There is nothing stopping Alexis. Alexis is about to win. And the person who bet big, because we have big bets here. Second biggest bet is on Alexis at 12k. Biggest bet was on Rio from Ryan Killer at 13. It looks like Alexis fans are about to make a lot of cash. There you go, guys. Yep, Alexis was still a champion with this Tag Force 3 Cyber Angel deck. She's just not a world champion with it. Alright, guys, the next duel will be Joey Wheeler versus Sora, two fusion boys. I love Joey, but I'm not placing my money on him. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been burned by him way too many times. It looks like we have huge Joey and Sora fans in chat. All right. Sora from Kingdom Hearts, more like Sora from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5 Tag Force. I mean, from Yu-Gi-Oh! Arc 5. He looks like a kid. He plays with scissors, apparently. That's what his deck's called, anyway. He uses Fernables, I think is what they're called. Fluffles, something like that. You guys should know. He fuses them into, like, weird things. You're gonna choose Joey even if he loses. See, that's a real fan right there. Me? It's been 80 tournaments. I still haven't seen Joey win, so... My faith is gone. The fact that his luck-based cards are... True luck, and it's very hard for him to get the right stuff... Really hurts me. Alright, guys. Here we go. Sora versus Joey. Alright, and let's see. Yugi Mudo believes in Joey Wheeler, apparently. Good luck to your best friend. And just like that, we have Mass Dragon coming in with a Mage Power. Interesting use of Mage Power, Joey. Holy shit, Joey had nothing in his hand? He only had one monster? Okay. Uh, all Sora has to do is destroy Joey's master, or uh, uh, Mass Dragon. And two tour guides from the underworld are dead. Polymerization, that'll do it. What are we gonna make? And the monster being made is the Frightful Tiger, which does pop cards. Goodbye, Mass Dragon. Goodbye, Random Trap, but it wasn't Bottomless. Bottomless says goodbye to Tiger. Joey loses three cards. Sora loses a couple cards, too. But Joey's the one that's bricked, so Sora still has control. Dark Hole on a single Hex Sealed. I'm a little upset, Joey, but I've seen a board. Uh, you know, honestly, just terrible. Just terrible, Joey. You're upsetting me. And Joey's still bricked. Joey finally decides to use Call of the Haunted to bring out Red Eyes Wyvern, which he graceful charity the way. And he destroys the rabbit. 
And finally, Sora is the one that's bricked, and Joey can go in with his Summon Skull! The card he uses to summon Black Skull Dragon. Oh boy. And we have a set, okay. Without a fusion, Sora's in a little bit of trouble. The bear is destroyed. Honestly, Sora is just waiting for Polly in a combo. And Summon Skull goes in again and defeats the Crane Crane. But it does not make a difference. Until Joey gets another monster, he's in trouble. Literally, Joey draws four cards. Not a single one of them is a monster he can summon. And finally, Sora is bricked. If ever there was a time to draw a monster, screw it, Baby Dragon will take it. We take Baby Dragons. Those are awesome. Alright, and just like that, Joey Wheeler is about to win this duel. And we have ourselves a Furnable Dog, which uses its effect to get a Furnable Leo. But that doesn't matter, he can't fuse without the other one. Fairy Box, okay! Let's flip a coin and find out if Joey any, has any luck. He does not. However, he has two, and he does not. This is why Joey loses, by the way, guys. Because even with two coin flips, he fails. Alright, and we have Mass Dragon here to end this duel. The winner will obviously be Joey Wheeler. One fusion was not enough, Sora. One fusion was not enough. Looking between these two, Sora had a huge 12k vote from Ghost Wolf. But Joey's gonna take all of that money. Alright guys, let's go ahead and move on in the tournament. The next duel will be... Akiza versus Yuzu, everybody! Yuzu is the girl from Arc 5, Akiza is the girl from 5D. Go ahead and place your bets. Go ahead and place your bets, everybody. Do you believe in the plant girl or the music girl? Alright, almost set up here. Everybody, I am ready to start out. The two red-headed main female protagonists are here. Let's go. I will check out the bets as soon as they finish. If I remember to. <laughs> All right, she stun- Oh wow, what a way to start the duel! Wow! Doesn't use her effect because she hates me. All right, I'm gonna check these bets, and the bets are humongous! Wow! All right, second highest bet is on Yuzu from Ghost Wolf at 14.5k, but the number one bet is on Akiza from Rhyme Killer at 15k. And just like that, Titanial Princess is here, and she tributed it? What?! Why? I mean, don't get me wrong, Giga Plant will be more useful, but you need to summon it twice! Why didn't you just summon it through Low Fire Blossom? Now you- look, do you see what happened, Akiza? You see what happened? You lost your Beer Force! Do you see this, Akiza? Creature Swamp, you lost your two best monsters! That was a god-tier play from Yuzu! Yuzu with the god-tier play literally is gonna win this duel! Not right now, but she is. Loses her Mirror Force, loses her Titanio, loses her Giga Plants, and loses her Life Point. Just like that, Yuzu has complete control of the duel. And we know this Destiny Draw is not Mirror Force, because it's gone. She summons Lone Fire Blossom as if that is going to help her. And with it, she summons Giga Plant, which is too late. And just like that, Yuzu will wreck Akiza and give a lot of people some cash. Akiza, get your ass out of here. The winner is Yuzu. 
Now everyone, what did you learn today? Do not tribute your strongest attack point monster. It's just not the right thing to do. Alright, so let's go ahead and set this up. The next duel shall be Bastion Misawa. Ah, why do I ha why do I keep putting Bastions in my tournament? Bastion Misawa versus Reiji. Alright everybody, place your bets, place your bets, I'm setting up the duel right now. Bastion's gonna take on Reiji and hopefully he doesn't just get completely wrecked because in this- I feel like Bastion's AI and deck in this game is just the worst ever made. Like, I don't know what it is, but Tag Force 7, uh, Bastion is just the worst. Alright. And it looks like we're ready to start the duel. Let's go ahead and get it going. Reiji versus Bastion. Alright, Reiji shall open the duel and let's see what he does with it. He's already got a pendulum, but nope, he doesn't have the pendulum set up though. And Hydro Gedon comes in and destroys the monster, but because it didn't get sent to the graveyard, Hydro Gedon does not get its effect. And there we go, we have a Pendulum Summon. That Pendulum Summon will be Proud Chevalier. And Doom King's effect says it has 2800, Proud Ogre effect says it has 3300, and it looks like Bastion's in a bad position. All right, Bastion, you're just going to set, set, pass, okay? Nothing wrong with that. And that monster is even stronger now. He's at 3,800. Carmenet on maybe dead, which gives uh, Bastion a little chance to get something out here. Uh, Bastion, use Carbonet on. Bastion, use Carbonet. I know you have that Hyanzaru. You can at least defend your life points with it. And that's two Carbonetons, Bastion. You can summon two Hyanzarus. Just do it. What the fuck? Does the AI not know how to use Carbonetton? What the hell? And just like that, Bastion is about to take 4,800 in one turn. Thank you for the cheer, Darius. I appreciate that. And Malfunction actually does its job. All right, we're all set up, everybody. Let's see if Bastion can do something with his final turn. Oh, oh, now you feel like it. All of a sudden, you feel like using Hyanzaru. Why don't you summon two? You got two in the grave. You piece of shit. Oh, my God. All of a sudden, the AI's like, wait a minute. I might lose. I should probably do this. All right, well, he kept himself alive, but for how much longer? Mathematician draw, uh, dying is a good thing for Bastion. Oh, now you feel like it. Okay. Yes. All right, the Proud Ogre. Honestly, Reiji has done 3,000 damage to himself. Oxy get on dead, Hydro get ons are dead, there's nothing left. Yeah, this looks like it's over, guys. Covenant. And he's lost his calculator. And don't forget the DD resource management. And just like that, the field is wide open. You don't need to do any of this. You already won. There's nothing stopping you from winning. You don't need a 6,600 attack point freaking Proud Chevalier, but you have one. And just like that, Reiji shows why he is part of the Seto Kaiba crew of just having huge ass attack points. 
<laughs> All right, Reiji, you are the victor. I told you guys, Bastion sucks. All right, the next duel and final duel of round one of our copycat tournament shall be Yuya versus Tron. Here we go. Alright, the final main character to come out today will be Yuya, and he is going up against Tron. Tron is a Zexal villain that uses something called, um, Heraldry? I, I don't really know how to pronounce it. Because I don't, I don't know what it is, honestly. Alright, I am just about ready to go. Let's go ahead and set up this duel. Everybody, let's play some Yu-Gi-Oh! It's time for Yuya vs. Trog. Heraltic Beast? Yeah, that's probably it. Alright, Heraldic Beasts are coming in and Tron is going to fight it with... Oh wait, Wonder Balloons start the duel. Wonder Balloons can be actually pretty good. Polish Burial from Tron means he can throw away anything he wants. And he throws away good old Leo, which lets him get Heraldic Beast Auber Conway. And he chooses to summon Leo, which lets him special summon this card. And then he uses uh, Heraldry Reborn, and just like that, he has three monsters on the field. All my YouTube videos are scheduled to go up a day, uh, a, a day before at least. Just like how I make all my YouTube videos weeks in advance, all my Twitch videos are, all my YouTube videos are also set to release in advance. And just like that, he summons number sixty-nine, Heraldry Crest. And we have Entertainment Pendulum Wizard. There it is. And the wizard is nice. There we go. Does he have anything stronger than wizard? He has Fire Muffler Lion. I don't think that's going to help you. Let me check the bets because it looks like a Tron victory right now. It's 50-50, but Yuya has a baby bet from Laser at 3.6k. Whereas Tron has a huge bet at 9k from Shadow Phoenix. There is a story mode for this game, and I will let's play it one day, but we're not on Tac Force 7 yet. And just like that, Yuya is about to die. Like, literally, he is suffering. Alright, Yuya, for the love of God, play Yu Gi Oh! Like, correctly. That's all we're asking. And he summons Entertainment Friend Donkey, which actually has an effect, to summon Entertainment Whip Snake, which has an effect, to make Heraldry Crest really weak. However, Heraldry Change says that he has that monster now, and ends the battle phase. Whip Snake is nice, but I don't know if it's going to save him from all of these monsters, especially if his opponent summons two of them. And his opponent summons another one. Tron is coming out with two Heraldry Crests. And how do you stop two? He'd even use Whip Snake's effect. Just dead. I mean, he would have died either way, but damn. Tron destroys Yuya. Two main characters knocked out in the first round. All right, everybody, we have now seen some of our weakest uh, copycats get knocked out, which is sad, but, you know, that's how it goes. The next duel shall be... Let's see. Yami Yugi versus Shark. And Shark kind of wrecked the opponent. So, who do you bet on? The King of Games or the King of Sharks? <laughs> Alright, I'm setting it up right now. 
Everyone try to go with the safe bet of betting on the king of games. He's an understandable bet. Very understandable bet. But Shark had a good duel today, so maybe he can take out the king. Who knows? All right, here we go, guys. It's time for Yugi versus Shark. Place your bets while you have the chance, but Yugi versus Shark is here. All right. Alright, Yugi opening up with MST just randomly hits Bubble Bringer, a card I used in Master Duel, funny enough. Rageki will hit the face down card, and Magician's Valkyria comes on out. He is really not willing to save, uh. Like, he does not save his Rageki, does he? Heavy Storm comes through, and Yugi's about to lose his best cards. Magical Dimension is gone, and we have a trade! Uh-oh. Shark with his last card truly believes that Yugi is going to brick everybody. And Yugi does technically brick because that monster wasn't worth attacking with. Yami Yugi summons Apprentice Magician all of a sudden. I don't know why. He could have had eight. If you were going to summon it anyway, you might as well do 800 damage. Are you ever going to play Master Duel again? Probably not. I don't like Master Duel. And Dark Renewal kicks in, and he gets Dark Magician of Chaos, which gets him Raigeki. Okay. King of games, everybody. King of games. And he also has skilled Dark Magician, because why the hell not? Oh, by attacking directly, he has removed Shark from play. I guess that's the same thing as being uh, sent to the Shadow Realm. And it looks like Big Jaws is here to do absolutely nothing. And Kar No! He summons Karibo to end the duel! However, Aegis of the Dragon Lord will protect his monster. He actually summoned Karibo to win this duel, but it does not matter. Karibo, actually attacking Karibo was a bad idea because now you're banished, but whatever. Big Jaws is banished. And Depth Shark in attack mode makes no sense. Oh wait, it has an effect. It has 2800 attack, but Raigeki says go to hell. And goodbye to you, because Dark Magician of Chaos goes in. And then Skill Dark ends the duel. Just like that. The King of Games will not be stopped this early in the tournament. It is really hard to beat him. Uh, he basically runs a Chaos uh, Magician deck. Which is why his deck's called Controller of Chaos. The only thing breaking it up is Slifer. Alright. The next duel is Chaz Princeton and his Armed Dragons versus good old fashioned Yusei Fudo. Now, don't get me wrong. I love Chaz. No, I'm not done with Attack Force 6. I will be continuing that Let's Play. But right now, I've been only streaming on Saturdays simply because I'm a busy guy. Lots of new games coming out, all that fun stuff. But I will continue to uh, Attack Force 6 Let's Play at some point. You don't have to worry about that. It will continue. But the busier I get, the, th the more I have to put stuff in the... In the background, you know, I have to stop doing certain series and then bring them back. All right, you say, you say. Now, we've already seen a duel between these two, and we already know how this ends, unless, you know, the AI decides to go ham today. Let's go ahead and set it up, though. It's gonna be you say Fudo versus Chas Princeton. Any of them that's becoming your favorite? What do you mean by that's becoming my favorite? 
If you mean Tag Force games, I still have to live with... Be uh, Beginning of Destiny is still one of the best, if not my favorite. But Tag Force 3 is my the only one that makes me question myself. Alright, Yusei starts off with Quick Draw. Spear Dragon really doesn't care about Quick Draw. Stampy Destruction gets rid of Scrap Iron! Ooh, losing Scrap Iron Scarecrow is pretty big. Uh, new Yu-Gi-Oh games that I like? Uh, I, the World Champion games that I never played before are kind of fun. Ooh, Doppel Warrior. Chaz is in a lot of trouble. Even the Doppel Tokens can take out Spear Dragon. And Excel Synchron comes on out. And by using this card's effect, he's now level 6, which makes a level 8 monster. Chaz Princeton, how are you going to deal with the legendary Stardust Dragon? One of the most solid cards in the game. And Jet Synchron will destroy that card, which means Chaz is taking 2,500 direct damage. Oh boy. Chazzy Boy's in some trouble, and he can only set no trap cards. His hand must be all monsters. Stardust gets rid of Mass Dragon, but what will Chaz do with said Mass Dragon? He'll get another one. I would have picked Arm Dragon level 3, but maybe he just doesn't have a combo yet. Stamping Destruction yet again to get rid of a Mystical Space Typhoon. And Stardust is will- Okay, he's willing to get rid of Stardust just to do that, but that's fair. That's fair. And Arm Dragon level 5 is here. And Arm Dragon level 7 is here, which could have defeated the Arm Dragon- I mean, the Stardust. And Arm Dragon level 7 will destroy that to do 2800 direct. We now know that all he would have- all he protected was a freaking MST. And Stardust is underpowered. It needs more attack points. Yusei can't get it more attack points. And we have Flying Kamakiri, because why the hell not? Arm Dragon level 7, Chaz is probably his most iconic card at this point. Takes out Quillbolt Hedgehog. In my series, that is. He'll never summon level 10. I give it, I've given up on him doing that. And even if he does it in this game, why does it matter? It's not going to have the animation. And just like that, Yusei Fudo takes a lot of damage. And there we go, everybody. Chaz Princeton takes out a main character. Yusei Fudo, winner of many tournaments, is out of here. The, the tides have changed, everybody. The times have changed. Chaz Princeton takes out Yusei. All right, Chazzy boy, you move forward. The next duel will be my Valentine versus Jack Atlas. Jackie has way more attack than my, but my is way faster than Jack. So, place your bet on who you think will win. Chaz it up, everybody. He actually did it. My versus Chaz. Oh, wait, I put Chaz. Oh, shit, I was so addicted. Uh, delete, delete, you didn't see me do that. No one saw, no one saw quiet you. No one saw nothing. My versus Jack. Nobody saw nothing. Alright, let's go ahead and do the bets. Go ahead, place your bets, people, place your bets. All right, my Valentine, you're a very powerful duelist and a champion. Jack Atlas, you're also a champion. Funny enough, it's, uh, you know, two people that have won one tournament. Just one, but that's, that's enough to be remembered. Ah, I, look, any character I like seems to die, so I stop caring about them. Chaz, no, there's no way he's going to win. Joey, no way he's going to win. Jack, no way he's going to win. And by me being against them, that means they have a chance of winning. A small chance, but a chance. But all of my favorite characters usually fail me. Chaz has won one tournament, Jack has won one tournament, but Joey... Joey has not. <laughs> Joey, to this day, has not. Alright, the Battle of the Blondes, let's go. All right, looking at the bets, it looks like Jack has a very tiny bet from Shadow Phoenix at 3k. Mai has a bigger bet at 7k from Crocky the Lost. Good luck to you, Crocky. But I don't know if Mai's going to win that one. 
Jack is uh, pretty powerful, and Mai's weakness is getting overpowered. Hysteric Sign kicks in to get her Elgin Egotus, which I guarantee she will not use on main phase one. Harpy Queen comes on out. Harpy Queen gets her her field spell, which is weird to do after the fact. You probably should have done that before the fact. She used Elegant Egotist on main phase one? What the hell? Cheater! You never do that! That is not... I, I refuse to believe that this is my Valentine. Did she hear me? Does, do, do the characters hear me through the mic? Does this somehow like fuse with the game? Is that a way of doing that? And she summons Harpy Lady 1, which will pop another spell trap card. Okay, she popped her own Hysteric Sign, which normally would be bad, but actually it's a really good play. Alright, so far it looks like Jack is getting wrecked, and Hysteric Sign gets her Harpy's Feather Tuster, Harpy Queen, and Harpy's Pet Dragon. Alright, Jackie boy, this is your last draw. Make it count. He ends his... Okay. More like Destiny Brick, everybody. This duel is over. Harpy's Feather Duster will clear out the back row. And maybe you shouldn't have Harpy's Feather Duster if you were going to do that. Oh, you had two magic, so it didn't matter. And just like that, Jack is not out of here. Wait! There is still a chance! Don't give up! Jack is still here! Jack uses his Harpy's Feather Duster. Different art, but whatever. And now the duel's over. Okay, well, he lasted one more turn. And her final Harpy Harding Ground is here. My Valentine completely wrecks Jack for 8, 000, with 8,000 life points left. And just like that, the Harpies go to town. Jack Atlas is out of here. Good job, my fans. You won a lot of money there. Good job. Going down swinging gives out a tier sub to my val- There's a person in chat called my valentine? I highly doubt that. But thank you anyway, go down swinging. I, I really, really appreciate that. All right. The next duel is going at it. Let's take a peek. Shall be Maximilian Pegasus, also a one-time champ, versus... Um... Jesse Anderson. Funny enough, didn't Maximilian Pegasus say that Jesse was like the fifth strongest duelist he ever saw? Alright, Jesse versus Pegasus. Everybody, place your bets, place your bets. Everybody. Yeah, he created Rainbow Dragon just for Jesse. Alright, I'm setting up the duel right now. Let me go find Pegasus. Versus J Joseph. Jesse, where are you hiding? Alright, I'm all ready to start this duel, everybody. Let's go ahead and get it going. Thank you for your patience, and let's go. Pegasus versus the guy he said was the fifth strongest. But let's see if he just wasn't including himself in that. Huh. Taking a look at this. Jesse will start our duel, and Jesse starts with a basic set. Pegasus matches it with a Toon Cannon Soldier that can't attack, and no Toon Kingdom. I'm going to take a look at the bets. Very tiny bets on this one. Uh, overall, pretty big uh, for individual people, though. Kyle Stacy has Jesse at 6.4k. However, Peace has freaking Pegasus at 10k. Holy crap. 10k on Pegasus, huh? Well, Spirit Barrier will protect his life points, but without Toon Kingdom, he does not have the combo. Toon Table of Contents can fix that problem, though. Alright. Toon Table of Contents gets him the Toon Kingdom. Toon Kingdom comes in. He loses Dark Hole, Marshmallow, Monster of Born. Yeah, he lost a lot of good cards. But he does summon his Toon Dark Magician Girl, and with that, he can directly attack for 2k damage. Poor Jesse. And Jesse is just forced to sit there as he loses life points. He needs to pull off a, a combo or a spell or a trap card that can help him. 
Right now, he's got nothing. In two turns, he loses. That is correct. In this game, uh, Toon Kingdom is a continuous spell. This was before they made it into a field spell. And Gristle Charity from Pegasus is always nice. Let's see. He gets himself a Toon Gemini Elf, and he can't attack, sadly. Next turn, Jesse Anderson is guaranteed to lose, and by the looks of the bets, most people thought he would lose anyway. Yeah, he's a hard person to, to believe in. And Crystal Horde is gone. Which wouldn't have worked anyway, because he's not attacking your monsters. And Toons go above and beyond, literally above the opponent, to attack directly. And just like that, they're out of here. The winner is Pegasus. Who has honestly been doing a lot better in my tournaments lately. Alright, looking at our next opponents, we have... Oh, this is going to be an embarrassing duel. Everybody, are you ready for an embarrassment? Zane Truesdale versus Yuma. After watching Zane defeat Seto Kaiba in a mere three turns, I honestly believe that this is going to be a horrifyingly sad match. In fact, if any of you bet on Yuma, I feel bad for you. Yuma, I don't think, has even gotten top four before. In fact, I'm pretty sure he's never done that. And Z Zane here is a multiple-time champion. Alright. Zane may be dumb, but that dumbness has won him duels within three turns. In two turns, even. Alright, here we go, guys. This is for it. This is for everything. If Yuma wins this, I will admit that he is a decent character. But he has to beat Zane. Alright, here we go. He special summons his Cyber Dragon. He future fusions his uh, Cyber Twin Dragon, it looks like. And he doesn't have a normal summon, sadly. So yeah, Go 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 cannot be destroyed by battle. All right, Zane, you just hold your hold your ground, I guess. Heavy Storm! Oh! Zane loses his chance of getting Cyber Twin. And just like that, Utopia is here! Boss Monster's here in defense mode, but it's evolving, so that's why it was in defense mode. Utopia Prime is here, everybody. Why is it in defense mode? And Rank Up Magic! What the hell? Yuma evolves! It's a Utopia Ray victory! He's got 2,800 attack! And victory's effect means he does a shit ton of damage to Zane. Well, Zane, you kind of lost all your best cards, so good luck. Oh yeah, let's play a monster in attack mode. That sounds like a great idea. Evolution Burst! Wait, it was a great idea. Holy shit. And Zane destroys that awesome looking monster that took a lot of cards to summon. But he can bring it back with no attachments, which doesn't really matter, I guess. And Cyber Network will throw away a card. And Cyber Dre will do absolutely nothing, I assume. 2400 damage will be dealt. Zane is about to lose, and I'm about to be forced to admit that Yuma's a good duelist. Oh god. Ooh, that's a hell of a card to draw! Everything's going to the uh, remove from play zone, and here comes the ultimate monster! Chimera Tech Overdragon, just barely strong enough to defeat the opponent, and here comes Cyber Dragon! Cyber Dragon! Cyber Dragon! And Cyber Dragon Dre! And he's an idiot, but I can't stop his idiocy. You know Zane's gonna do it. And Zane plays Chimera Fortress Dragon at 5k. <laughs> Everyone in chat was not surprised. They're like, don't do it, Zane. Don't do it. Everyone knew he was gonna do it. Anyone that's been watching Zane is like, he's gonna do it, isn't he? He's gonna ruin it. And he ruined it. And he summons core in attack mode, which is kind of risky when your life points are these, this low. Every time he disappoints the fans. And here comes Gagaga Gardna. Doing a lot of damage to Zane. 
who needs to be a lot more careful. And Zane decides that he wants to lose the duel by activating that card. I wasn't joking. He decides he wants to lose the duel. Everybody, this duel is over. If Zane does not win in this one attack, the duel is over. He will win in this one attack. 8,100! Zane wins! If he, if Yuma had survived the turn, Zane would have lost to Power Bonds. But that is it, everybody. I don't have to say shit. Yuma sucks. <laughs> yeah. I don't gotta say a goddamn thing. Yuma still sucks. It was close. I'll admit it. It was close. But Zane's AI is so bad that it, that you should just wreck him. <laughs> oh, thank you, Zane. All right, guys. The next duelist going at it will be Yami Merrick versus Alexis Rhodes. Interesting. Yuma did a lot better than Kaiba. I'll tell you that much. All right, guys. Now, Alexis Rhodes with her Cyber Angels are pretty effective, especially since it's the Tag Force 3 deck I remade in this into this game. And Yami Merrick is also pretty good. They're both champions. One-time champions with their current decks. So, we'll see how this goes. Personally, I believe Merrick's deck is pretty good at countering people, but Alexis doesn't really care that much about the kind of counters he uses. But we'll see. Anything can happen. Yuma better than Kaiba? Eh, in today's tournament, yes, but overall, no. Kaiba has a championship under his belt. Yuma doesn't even have a top four. So, you know. Gotta go with what the game gives you. Gotta go with what the tournaments give you. Alright. Let's go ahead and get things started, everybody. It's time for Yami Merrick versus Alexis Rhodes. Ricky Mort's got 50 quid on Merrick. <laughs> the boats are in. These are huge bets, everybody. Yami Merrick has a 20k bet from Peace, but it is not the biggest bet because Alexis Rhodes has a 21k bet from Ghost Wolf. Two humongous bets going at it. And I believe either character can win this. It's a lot. It, Laser, that's not even a competition because, honestly, they never Pendulum Summon, so... Like, you're saying at least one is bigger than zero? <laughs> Alright, Alexis has a full back row, which makes me think Morphin Jar. Dark Droid will do absolutely nothing. And a Baki's here, okay. And that's pretty good. We got some burn damage out. I'm honestly... Oh, MST and Goodbye Nightmare Wheel. His legendary card that would have helped him. Morphing Jar was correct. He lost the Winged Dragon of Raw. That is the good, best thing that could have happened today. The, Merrick losing the Winged Dragon of Raw means he actually has a good chance of winning. <laughs> That's embarrassing to say. And Alexis has a busted start. She's going all in. Abaki is dead and Merrick is left wide open. Merrick's in a lot of trouble in this duel. She already has her boss monster out. And it does do piercing. And she still has three back row on top of it. Alright, he summons Sangan in attack mode, which does not make sense to me, but whatever. At this point, you can't... You know what? In defense mode, he would be worse, because Dakini does piercing. Does he seriously have five traps? What the hell? The Secret Barrel will do a lot of burn, 1600 burn, but it's not winning any duels. The Premature Burial, she might be going for a victory. Nope, she picked Morphe Jar because AI brain. And she, okay, never mind, she has a tribute. And Splendid Venus, that is super going to be game. 
Splendid Venus attacks and that will end the duel. Sangan comes in and gives him absolutely nothing that could save him. And just like that, Yami Merrick is out of here. He's not out of here. He's got one turn left in him. Yami Merrick has one turn left to find out how to do 1900 burn. Call of the Haunted. Yeah, do not bring back Raw. Summons Drilago, which does not do the burn he needs to do. And leaving his monster in attack mode is like asking for death. He is about to lose this duel, everybody. This is the game-winning attack. Dakini can do piercing. Ceasefire kicks in. That's 2k damage. Yami Merrick with the top deck of Ceasefire having four monsters exactly that does 2,000 damage. Yes, the Yami Merrick has defeated Alexis Rhodes. Oh, shit. Last turn, last chance. She was one attack away from a victory, and he clutches it. Sometimes you just gotta be a villain, guys. The villains get the cool cards. Honestly, he, we should just be happy he didn't have Raw in his hand anymore. That could have been bad. All right, the next bet should be Joey Wheeler versus Yuzu, and Yuzu wrecked Akiza. Everybody place your bets. Place your bets, people. Everyone place your bets. Joey Wheeler and Yuzu. Now, obviously, <laughs> I'm going to say it again. Joey's screwed because Yuzu wrecked Akiza. But, you know, good luck to him. Good luck to him. All right, everybody, let's go ahead and start this duel. It's time for Yuzu versus Joey Wheeler. It's time. I'm hoping for a good duel between these two. <laughs> And she starts with a really good card to get her two more cards. And sets. Not bad. Joey starts with Future Fusion, which actually gives him a fighting chance. And he chooses uh, good old Black Skull Dragon. And Red Eyes Wyvern is here. Shining Angel is the perfect card for Yuzu, because that can get her her Sonata card. Sonata gives her a lot of attack. So now she can tribute summon or summon another monster. MST can get rid of the future fusion, which means Joey will not be receiving his monster. Creature swap will work, but honestly, you just got 100 more points. That's not a great play. You would think you'd want to keep your monster that buffs your monsters, but whatever. And the scapegoats are here, everybody. We got scapegoats, people. And scapegoats will help Joey stall for time as he looks for better monsters. And he doesn't have one yet, but he has swords, so he can hold his opponent back until he finds a card that can bring him back into the duel. And Joey Tribute summons for the legendary Summon Skull, and that Summon Skull can easily destroy Red Eyes Wyvern. Not bad from Joey so far. As long as he has swords up, he's in control of the duel. Joy Wheeler will fill up his last, uh, you know, card zone, and he'll use it to summon the Mass Dragon, which can easily destroy Nova Summoner, which is something she wants him to do anyway, so she could say, oh, well, actually, I would not have picked Sonata. I thought you picked Nova Summoner again. Her AI may not be perfect. And like I said, as long as he has swords, he's still in control. And just like that, he's out of swords, which means she can now start turning things around if she can pull off a combo. He's going to start by going in, and he gets out, goes after Sonata. It is dead. And he goes after Arya. She is dead. That's it. She's wide open now, Joey. All you got to do is punch her in the face. And she bricks. I didn't know that was possible, but she bricked. And now Joey, with complete control of the duel, goes for Future Fusion, which he can't even technically do, but whatever. Black Skull Dra Oh no, Thousand Dragon is on the way. And Master Dragon and Summon Skull will do a lot of damage directly.
All right, Destiny Draw comes through. Let's see what she gets. She gets her first movement solo, which lets her uh, special summon a monster. Serenade can count as two tribute monsters. If that's why she's bricked. Yes! And she's bricked, so she uses it to summon her ultimate monster. Say hello to Mozartha, the Melodious Demon. And Joey wipes out everything to make sure that card can't stop him. Just like that. Joey was willing to throw, throw away everything. And he draws his Red Eyes Wyvern. And Red Eyes Wyvern goes on in. Yuzu is left with almost nothing. A thousand dragon is on the way. What could possibly go wrong? She plays out Nova Summoner. Goes with the creature swap. She did it again. She has exactly what she needs. But the fairy box, will it finally work? It will. And she loses her monster. She loses her life points. She's out of options. Joey Wheeler finally gets it right. Thousand Dragon is on the way, everybody. A classic monster that has just enough attack to be a bully. And he gets rid of it to summon a legendary monster, the Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon. And there we go. Just like that, Joey Wheeler is unstoppable. He was able to stop two creature swaps from being important. All right, guys, let's go ahead and move on to the final duel of top 16. The final duel of top 16 will be Reiji versus Tron. All right, everybody, place your bets, place your bets. It's time for Reiji versus Tron. Two villains, I think, going at it. I don't know these uh, series that well, or at all, technically. The only thing I know about them is from this freaking series, is my CPU tournaments. All right, and I need Reiji. Reiji looks like he'd be a villain. All right, let's go ahead and set this up, everybody. It's time for Reiji versus Tron. Let's get it going. Betting small is okay, as long as you're betting, because that means you at least have a chance of winning good money. Especially if you're willing to bet small on underdogs. All right. Reiji starts the duel with a brick. That happens. Tron starts the duel with a basilisk, which doesn't have a lot of damage, but... He can get out another monster, which does have damage. And that could give him another monster to the hand. Doing greater uh, evil things for the greater good just sounds like a villain to me. And we have oh, another heraldic card. I think he summoned his boss monster already. Yep, we have the crest already. Just like that. Looking at the bets. The bets are small. Reiji has 2.9k from Phantom Lord. And Tron has 7.5k from Peace. Okay, we have Covenant with the Valkyrie, which can destroy his Heraldry card, and it's gone. And we have Covenant with the Swamp King, which gets him a fusion, I believe. Yep. And with the fusion, we have ourselves... Triple D, Demujin, the Blaze Overlord. At 2k attack, Tron is suffering. He's gonna need to find something better. And he's got Advanced Heraldry Art. Which can give him some cards to, you know, keep him safe. And instant XYZ summon. He gets himself... Oh god, the Genome Heritage. Okay. Only it's, it has enough attack, but apparently there's something that stops... Oh no, it does not. That guy had like 3,000 attack. And Covenant with the Swamp will cost him 1,000. And Covenant with the Valkyrie will cost him 1,000. But that Valkyrie will continue to destroy cards. Goodbye, Twin-Headed Eagle. And goodbye, uh, your Genome card. Transmigration Prophecy can bring cards back to your deck, which you might actually need. And he could set a monster, but it looks like Tron is kind of screwed. Oh, wait! Reiji has to win right now! If Reiji does not win on this turn, he will burn to death. This is the deciding turn! Reiji must win on this turn! Covenant will make it so his opponent has nothing. He's wide open. But Tron can take the hit! Oh, God! I think Reiji literally just killed himself! Why are you doing this on main phase two, you idiot? Oh, wait, it's not doing anything. Never mind. And just like that, Tron wins by existing. 
I don't even think he needs to attack right now. I think he just wins. Yep. And this is the reason why Reiji loses most of his duels. He actually just straight up burns himself to death. Oh, wait. He special summons Leonidas and heals. That's it. Reiji is in the duel. Reiji wins, baby. Reiji wins. He heals himself and he does not burn. Reiji takes out Tron thanks to Leonidas. And there we go, Tron. You thought you had a free victory? Well, Reiji had a way out of this. It was a very close duel. I agree. I don't think I've ever seen Leonidas even do that. He usually just dies. <laughs> All right. Well, Joey's got his work cut out for him. Your top eight competitors at our copycat tournament are Reiji, Joey Wheeler, Yami Merrick, Zane Truesdale, Maximilian Pegasus, My Valentine, Chaz Princeton, and Yami Yugi. Funny enough, champion, 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 not a champion, not a champion. Only two of these characters have no have no freaking crowns on their heads. All right, let's go ahead and set this up. Yami Yugi versus Chaz Princeton. Go ahead and place your bets, people. Go ahead and place your bets. Do you believe in Joey or do you believe in Chaz? All right. Oh, did I say Joey? I meant Yugi. Yeah, who cares? You know, you know what I said. You know what I meant. <laughs> Ignore me. Please ignore me. I am not even here for commentary anymore. I'm here just to mess with people. All right, let's go ahead and start this up. Chaz versus Yami Yugi. The king versus... Honestly, I don't know what Chaz would be. Alright, Chazzy boy. You are the Chaz. I believe in you. I believe you could do this. So, Chaz has a ginormous bet. He has the highest bet of the day of 28k coming in from Peace. Yami Yugi has a really big bet coming in from Amon at 16k. But looking at this, I don't know who's going to win. Wait, did Chaz lose Mirror Force immediately? Hey, he's got Arm Dragon level 3 though. That's pretty good. And Arm Dragon level 3 will evolve into Arm Dragon level 5. And Arm Dragon level 5 mixed with a Spear Dragon will destroy the opponent. But I think he attacked in the wrong way. He should have got Arm Dragon level 7. That was a, mi a mistake right there. Great play from Chaz so far. But Yami Yugi has Magician's Valkyria and destroys the Spear Dragon. Hey, the Master of... W? <laughs> master of Winds, thank you so much for coming. I hope you have fun today. And Dark Magician of Chaos is here, bringing back MST. And just like that, that Arm Dragon level 7 looks a lot better, right Chaz? Maybe you should have got it. Alright, Chaz luckily has swords to hold back Yugi as he tries to find his level up card. Oh, he throws away Arm Dragon level 10, but he uses it to kill Dark Magician of Chaos for good. And just like that, he refills his hand, summons a Spear Dragon, and go why didn't you put Arm Dragon level 5 in attack? That's why, okay. Granted, if he put it in attack mode, he would have taken 24, so I'm not even going to blame him. And Call of the Haunted is gone. Yugi is in a lot of trouble. Dark Hole! Yugi, the king of destiny draws. Oh god, monster aboard! He took our dragon level 5! And he can't attack just yet, but he took it. 
Yugi Mudo, guys. Destiny Draw Supreme. And he's just going to wait with his Arm Dragon. Monster Reborn will bring back Spear Dragon, which is not enough. And Tribute Summon for Arm Dragon level 5. And he's willing to crash, but why is Spear Dragon not in attack mode? It would have gone to defense mode either way. And just like that, Skill Dark says goodbye to Spear Dragon. Alright, Chaz has now got to top deck his way back into this duel, but right now he's in, pro he's in trouble. Yugi has Defender and Skill Dark on the field. However, Troop Dragon will stall for Chaz. At least Chaz has some time. You're right about that, the Master of W. Those old school cards are way too good. Chaz is fighting for his life, but what can he do? All he's got to do, all he can do is set. He's scared. Yugi has two monsters that are way stronger than him. Troop Dragons are gone, and Arm Dragon level 3 will not survive. And just like that, there he goes. It doesn't matter if he never played it in the anime, he literally the game gives it to him, so what are you going to do? Apprentice Magician will be protected by Defender, but the life points will not. And here comes the damage. Chaz loses his Flying Kamakiri number one. And by losing that, he summons Flying Kamakiri number one. And Chaz loses his Flying Kamakiri number one. And he uses it to special summon himself Flying Kamakiri number one. And Yugi uses Magical Dimension to get rid of his apprentice, destroy that card, and just summon Magical Library. Okay. He's one spell away from being able to summon the Dark Magician. And Chaz is bricked! If Yugi summons one more monster, this duel is over, but Yugi doesn't have another monster or a spell card to summon Dark Magician. Chaz is pretty much screwed. And Chaz is pretty much dead! He can't Destiny draw when Mere Force is in the grave! And there we go, everybody. The king of games will remain the king. It's super hard to take this guy out. And Chaz fought for his goddamn life. Don't get me wrong. Chaz was playing really well, but you cannot drop at all. You have to be playing at top speed the entire duel. No bricks. If you're fighting the king, that is. All right, everybody, it's time for my Valentine to take on Maximilian Pegasus. Let's see what's going to happen. Do you guys believe in the power of tunes or do you guys believe in the power of Harpy Ladies? I'll give you a big hint. You should probably bet on my Valentine since, you know... He's spell card reliant, and she pops spell cards like they're freaking... Oh, I don't want to make that joke. He, She pops spell cards because her deck is really good at that. <laughs> uh, let's see here. And let's go ahead and get started. Thank you all for your patience. It's time for Pegasus versus Mai. You could say candy. I could say a lot of things, but I'm not going to. <laughs> Alright, Pegasus and Mai. Will Mai not draw any of her spell trap popping cards and Toon Kingdom will be left alone? Or will Toon Kingdom simply die and all of his tunes will die with it? And Toon Table Contents will get him, I'm guessing, Toon Goblin Attack Force. Alright, looking at the bet, Mai has 47% of the vote with a very tiny bet from Phantom Lord of 2k. Pegasus has 53% of the vote with a ginormous bet from Kyle Stacy at 10k. Dark Magician Girl, all of this on first turn! Let's hope she does not have a Spellcraft card destruction. Elegant Egotist will not make a difference. Crystal Charity might make a difference. Harpy's Hunting Ground makes the, all the difference. Harpy Channeler, all you have to do is target Toon Kingdom. And that's it! Pegasus loses the duel. And Elegant Egotus on main phase one! Thank you, Mai! Thank you so much! He loses Call of the Haunted! He is wide open! 
This duel is over, everybody. Pegasus is 100% countered by people that use Spell Trap Card Destruction decks. And Harpy Lady 1 is here to destroy Hysterixa. Why didn't you target Hysterixa? You had two Elgin Egotists! You could have won! You could have easily won this duel. What were you thinking, Mai? She could have simply won on turn two, but she didn't want to. Alright, well, just because she didn't want to doesn't mean she's not going to win now. This is a super easy victory, guys. Harpy Phoenix Formation is in the game, and in the deck also. And just like that, Pegasus is wrecked in four turns, which it could he could have been wrecked in two, but she made it take four. Go my Valentine. It's uh, not the quickest duel. No, Zane beating Kaiba was the quickest duel. That was three turns. And my Valentine will be going to the semifinals. All right. Let's go ahead and have Zane Truesdale take on Miami Merrick. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that this guy will win or that Zane will win? I honestly don't know. All I do know is that Zane is probably going to win, because Zane is super strong. Like, honestly, the only way Zane loses is if his opponent, Yami Merrick, starts with Magic Cylinder. But obviously, Yami Merrick only runs one of those, so... Yeah. Oh no, was he the one that ran two? Hold up, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Either way, it's all about the top deck right now. Let's go. Now, Merrick could Nightmare Wheel. Nightmare Wheel would save him from all the damage. Ceasefire is not enough burn damage, sadly. Alright, let's see what Zane does. Zane starts the duel with his legendary Cyber Dragon. And his legendary Cyber Dragon Dre. And they're just gonna go in into a Nightmare Wheel. And in two Nightmare Wheels. And because Zane waited, he actually got rid of two Nightmare Wheels for free. Zane outplayed Yami Merrick super hard. Alright, Merrick, what are you going to do about that outplay? Exactly nothing. Yep, that sounds about right. Alright, Zane, do you got a monster you want to summon? No? Okay, well, Merrick loses the Pitch Black Warwolf, sadly. And Cyber Dragon Core is here. I will check the bets. Alright, bets are in. They're decently sized. Pretty damn big. Zane has 10k from Gambit. And uh, Merrick has 20k from Ghost Wolf. New Doria goes in to get rid of the core, but the Cyber Network won't let it. Still 800 damage, but yeah, it won't let it. And we have a Tribute Summon for Cyber Dragon. Interesting play. Cyber Network throws away another card. Cyber Dre does something. I don't know. Makes it level... I don't know. And New Doria dies, but New Doria could die getting rid of the other card, so that's something. Zane still has a Cyber Dragon, though. That means Merrick's in a lot of trouble. And Merrick just has a set. He's got nothing... I bet you Raw is in his hand again. I bet you he has Raw in his hand. Or a Legendary Fiend or something. And just like that, Zane's going for game, everybody. Do you see this field? Let's see if he messes it up. And Just Desserts! That is the most... That is the best he could have done. That was the best Just Desserts in the game. And it was before Zane could ruin everything by doing this. <laughs> Alright, Zane has lots of damage. Cyber Valley, really? Alright, Cyber Valley does what exactly? Okay. And Potter Greed from Yami Merrick. You know he needed that. And Merrick just sets and passes. Nope, he has one more trap, just in case. He's building up for Raw. <laughs> He's trying to get the Egyptian God card Raw. I could feel it. And here comes the first attack from Mystic Tomato. And there's the Magic Cylinder! Yep, there it is. He just drew it. He just drew it. Goodbye. 
And just like that, Zane with a just desserts and a magic cylinder loses the duel. Yami Merrick, a villain indeed, is moving forward, taking out a multiple time champ when he himself is only a one time champ. Remember, Merrick is the Battle City champion. I've only funny enough, I've only had one Battle City tournament in my life. That's crazy. That's like my favorite series, and I've only had one. I had the Kaiba Court Conquest tournament. Huh. Either way. Yami Merrick moves forward. Alright guys, the final fight up top four, and the fight that decides if Duel Monsters is going to take all of the copycat wins. Here it goes. Will it be Joey Wheeler or Reiji? Something that's really funny is that the copycat series is all based of them being copycats of the original series. So if all of the original characters win, that'll be super funny to me. Alright, here we go, guys. Akaiba Copy versus Joey Wheeler. I don't think Kaiba, I don't think Joey has ever beaten Kaiba in the anime, so I don't think his odds against Reiji are great. But what are you gonna do? I see a lot of Joey fans in chat, but they I guess you guys have not been on my channel long enough to know that he always disappoints. There is never a time where Joey clutches it for everybody. In fact, he he, he it's today is not the day. Here we go. Joey versus Reiji. Plus, we all know that Reiji is way stronger than Joey and has cards that can actually wreck him, such as that one trap card that just pops a monster. And spawn trap card. All right, we're gonna start with King of the Swamps, which is a good start from Joey. And Joey sets a sets a card. All right, two sets. Reiji, on the other hand, already is beginning the pendulum, and that's all he has. MST will deal with that card. It was yeah, that's the one he needed to hit. All right, he got rid of the Covenant. That's really good. Joey Wheeler summons his Red Eyes Wyvern and plays Polymerization. And fuses the last two cards in his hand, which will summon the ultimate me- Oh, okay, Black Skull Dragon. Why didn't you pick Meteor Black Dragon? It's in your freaking extra deck. All right, Meteor Black Dragon goes in, destro destroys the Night Howling. But Joey is officially out of cards. Joey used every card in his hand. Reiji has 44% of the vote at 6k from Kyle Stacy. Joey Wheeler has 56% of the vote from Peace at 6.6k. Reiji has bricked? Yo, Reiji has bricked! This is it! In tur five turns, Joey Wheeler wrecks his opponent with the legendary Black Skull Dragon! My absolute favorite card! All of Duel Monsters have wrecked all of the copycats! No copycats remain! Only the originals remain! And just like that, this has become a Duel Monsters tournament, everybody. Top four will be Joey Wheeler versus Yami Merrick, which is a plot duel from Battle City. And then we have My Valentine versus Yami Yugi, which is a plot duel from Duelist Kingdom. The originals are all that survived. No substitutions allowed in this copycat tournament. Joey Wheeler has done it. And Joey Wheeler is the only person in top four without a single championship under his belt. All right, let's go ahead and start the prediction. This is going to be big. Semi-finals, third place match, and finals are going to be big bets. This is going to be crazy. Everybody, it's time for my Valentine versus Yami Yu. All right, here we go, everybody. Let's go ahead and set things up. Only the best for our Duel Monsters characters that have proven that they are better than their counterparts. Literally knocking out all of their counterparts. Yusei Fudo lost to Chaz. Chaz lost to Yami Yugi. Yami Yugi killed Shark. He went all the way. My Valentine took out the freaking creator of Duel Monsters. She took out Jack Atlas, and she took out Champion Katori. I think that Mai has dueled uh, uh, Yugi many times in the past, and I'll tell you right now, she has never defeated Yugi. But, she's a champion now, so maybe she has more to defend. I don't know. Either way, 
the Battle of the Blondes continue. Alright, the King of Games will start the duel with a massive skill Dark. 1900 attack will be a lot to deal with. Harpy Queen can get her her field spell, but her field spell will be destroyed if she uses it. Because she, jo, uh, Yugi didn't play any spell or trap cards. Or she's just using it for the defense boost. Got it. And Yugi plays Mag Magician's Valkyria. Goodbye Harpy Lady Dancer, and goodbye to your life points. BioCycle Wolf, thank you so much for the cheer, and I hope you guys are enjoying this tournament. And Harpy Harpist is here to destroy its own field spell, but it needed to be there to destroy Valkyria to stop her from losing, or uh, from the, the freaking tide, uh, sorry, the lock to happen. Looking at the bets, we have some pretty big bets. Yami Yugi somehow only has 41% of the vote and has a 10k bet from Amon. Mai has a massive 15k bet from Ghost Wolf and has 59% of the vote, which is really surprising. I did outright say that she has never defeated Yugi. Alright, Harpy Channeler is here. And she uses Harpy Channeler and Elegant Egotist to bring out Harpy Lady. Oh, no Harpy Lady Sisters. She needed Harpy Lady Sisters. I was, I'm going to call that a misplay. And goodbye Apprentice Magician. Apprentice Magician will summon Magician of Faith, which will be useless. And Harpy Channeler's effect will get rid of that card to sell. Oh, we have the boss, everybody. Harpy's pet dragon has come to town. However, Dark Hole says go to hell to Harpy's pet dragon. And Defender the Magical Knight is here. 1600 damage. My Valentine is struggling. She's already lost a lot of cards. But she still has another Channeler in hand. And that Channeler could summon Harpy Lady 1 to buff herself. To a point that she can defeat Defender. But Defender will not be defeated thanks to its effect. He is literally staying alive with Defender. And Defender destroys the one monster making her strong enough, which means that she is back in danger. And Harpy Queen is here, which can easily destroy him. Okay, Harpy Queen does it, but Magical Dimension says go to hell, Harpy Queen. And Dubark Magician of Chaos is here. All right, just like that, my Valentine is back in a bad position. She's staring down a monster stronger than every card in her deck other than a buffed up Harpy's Pet Dragon. And just like that, her monsters are going to start getting removed from play. And Breaker is here, but I don't think you want to break that spell card. And he's not going to break that spell card. She loses Harpy Lady 1, and she loses her life points. My Valentine, I don't know how you come back. You've already lost everything. She has a destiny draw, but what could it possibly be to save her? She's out of cards. If it's Mirror Force, great, but he has Breaker, everybody. And Breaker waited for this situation and pops the freaking hist- Oh, damn it! The Hysteric Party would have summoned five monsters! And she would have survived and maybe had a chance of getting Harpy's Pet Dragon strong enough. But it's too late. Breaker set it up and Yami Yugi once again, for a, the millionth time, is going to the finals. My Valentine is going to the Bronze Place match. Great duel though, great duel. All right, now it's the duel we've all been waiting for because the chance is here. Can Joey Wheeler take out Yami Merrick? Joey, the closest he's ever been to winning a tournament was the Battle City Tournament where Merrick stole it from him at the very end. This could be his chance at redemption. This could be it. Anyone that was there for the first ever Battle City Tournament knows how hype it was. And I can't believe that Yami Merrick was the one to steal it from him right at the end. Will Yami Merrick do it again? Or will Joey Wheeler finally have a chance?
All right. Here we go, everybody. It's time. Joey versus Merrick. Anime be damned. Let's see what these characters can do in our AI tournaments. Joey Wheeler will be opening up the duel, and he already has King of the Swamp, a good start. Joey will simply set a card, no back row, which is a bad sign for Joey. Drilago comes in and does not destroy the Red Eyes Wyvern. Yami Merrick surprisingly has no back row. Future Fusion from Joey is pretty good and gets him a Black Skull Dragon. Future Fusion from Joey is pretty good and gets him a Black Skull Dragon. Future Fusion is pretty good from Joey and gets him a Thousand Dragon. I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I don't know what to say! Holy shit! Joey top decked three Future Fusions in one turn! And Gristle Charity. And there's the Red Eye. Oh, that card will bounce back the Red Eye's Wyvern and any fusion he does summon. Everyone's hoping for Merrick to get Heavy Storm, but I don't know. It might already be too late. And here we go. Are you guys ready for the Triple Future Fusion? Let's start it off with Thousand Dragon. Beautiful monster. Let's get out Black Skull Dragon, my favorite monster. And don't forget Black Skull Dragon's brother, Black Skull Dragon. <laughs> and just like that, Joey's field is almost maxed out. And Call of the Haunt, it means Joey will max out. Oh, don't do it, Joey. Joey, don't do it. Don't do it. Fusion. Yes, do fusion. Oh, thank God. Okay. Joey has summoned 2,000 dragons, two black skull dragons, and he's got himself a red eyes wyvern. 1,000 will bounce back most. Oh, Mystic Tomatoes first. Mystic Tomato will try to stall and special summon Mystic Tomato. Black skull dragon will do damage. Merrick will keep himself alive thanks to these Mystic Tomatoes. If it wasn't for them, this duel would be over. Dark Geroid will weaken a Black Skull Dragon to a point that it's even... It's a Thousand Dragon now. That Black Skull Dragon is basically just a Thousand Dragon. And Merrick has dropped everyone all the way down to a mere 3,000 life points. And Merrick... Oh! He gets rid of the Black Skull with Lava Golem! Good play from Merrick! And Call of the Haunted might not be the best play, but screw it. Drillago is here. And that's all he had to do. Alright, Merrick might just die. Lava Golem could still be used as a monster, but Mer Joey will suffer the burn. And there goes the damage, and the game-winning attack is here! Oh wait, no it's not. Thousand Dragon's not enough. And Metal Reflect Slime is here! Lava Golem is not strong enough anyway. None of these monsters are strong enough. Joey will lose to Burn eventually. And he filled up his back row, so Joey doesn't have space to play multiple spells and traps. He needs to get a Black Skull Dragon out or a Meteor Black Dragon out. Mystic Tomato will cost Merrick a lot of life points. Nudoria will cost... Wait, is he dumb enough to kill Lava Golem? He is! Joey's gonna be just fine, everybody. Oh, Jama Trio! Wait, what? Joey can no longer summon a monster? Joey's locked. Joey's locked. Merrick did it. He just needs to find burn cards now. Joey can't fusion summon anymore. Joey literally can't fusion summon anymore. He got him. Sangan dies, which gives Merrick a card that he could possibly use. Nudoria, which actually would help Joey in the end. Joey just needs to do a thousand damage, but Merrick can do this easily. Joey can't play any monsters. He can't fusion summon. He can't do nothing. Secret Barrel! That's gonna do 2,800 damage! That was the most valuable Secret Barrel I've ever seen! Nudoria does destroy Thousand Dragon, which helps Joey out immensely. And Joey wastes it by summoning Red Eyes Wyvern. Joey is still in a big bad position. He could totally lose this duel. 
He only needs a thousand damage, but he could totally lose because Joey filled up his own back row. Giant Germ burns Joey, but it also will hurt Merrick a lot because they're summoned in attack mode. Joey Wheeler is about to do 800, leaving Merrick with a mere 200 life points. Literally, just chip damage will kill Merrick. Any little chip will kill him. A Sparks would kill him. And Merrick sets, sets, passes. Joey Wheeler, are you dead? All right, Joey can do 500 damage to himself. Magic Cylinder, he can no longer kill Giant Germ. Joey Wheeler can no longer kill Giant Germ. Spear Creedon does die. And Lava Golem is now on the wrong. He killed himself! Yami Merrick has killed himself! Oh my god! His AI has literally broken, and he broke his own brain. Yami Merrick has committed suicide. There is nothing we can do. <laughs> oh, shit. He just picked the strongest monster in his grave. He didn't play tactically. Every time Merrick loses, it is death by his own monster, isn't it? Joey Wheeler threw a miracle with 350 life points left has won the duel. Ho! Oh, all right, everybody. It is time for the Bronze Place Breather match, which will not feel like a breather because it is a plot duel. Yami Merrick versus My Valentine, which was a top eight duel in Battle City. It is time for the third place match. Place your bets. Joey pulled off a miracle victory thanks to Merrick's AI being, well, this monster has the 3,000 attack points, so I want to use it to beat you in battle and win the duel. Not realizing that that 3,000 attack points comes at a cost, and that cost was the duel. All right, everybody. Get ready. It's time for the bronze place match. My versus Yami Merrick. BioCycle Wolf, thank you for the sub to Gambit. I really appreciate that. Honestly, thank you to everybody. Thank you to Amon. Thank you to Vidal. Thank you to, um, where's my list of subs? There should be a list. You know, it'll pop back up. Give me a second. Let me get this duel started first. And then I'm going to say thank you to everybody today. Because today has been a great sub day. Everyone gets to have emotes now. It's going to be a great day. All right, everyone, let's go ahead and get this started. It's time for Merrick versus Mai. Let's go. All right, looking at the predictions, Mai has 57% of the vote with 8K bet coming from Shadow Phoenix. Merrick has 43% of the vote with a 6K bet coming from Ghost Wolf. So the subs of the day, let me go ahead and take a look. I want to thank... Well, Big Smoke for cheering, BioCycle Wolf for subs and cheering. I want to thank the Disney Nerd for cheering, the Master of W for following, w going down swinging for subs and cheering. I want uh, more cheers from Big Smoke. Darius Winters, thank you for the cheer. Virus, thank you for the sub. Miss Hanamura, thank you for following. Disney Nerd, thank you. Vidal, thank you again. We got our hype train earlier. That was great. Amon, thank you for the subs again. Uh, Celtic, thank you for the cheering and thank you for the subs. And I know there's more if I keep going down. God, today's been a long day. Fire Lord Zuko, thank you for the cheering. Reaper, thank you for the cheering. And Mark Gaming, thank you for the sub. And that's going to be it for everybody. But thank you. All right. I'm looking at the game now, and it looks like Merrick's in complete control of the duel. And he's got a full field, so that's pretty scary. And Secret Barrel will do a lot of damage. That's 14. It's not 28, but it's still a lot. And Harpy Channeler is here, which sadly is better than all the cards he has out. And Icarus Attack is here. Why didn't? Why do you even attack? <laughs> if you were going to Icarus Attack, why'd you even bother attacking? I already did check the bets. I did that at the very beginning, Ghost Wolf. I even said the. I even said the bets. And Giant Germ is here. And a thousand attack. Oh, wait, Hysteric Party comes in. And Harpy Chandler comes back. And just like that, we have 
Anything else? Nope, just Giant Germ. Okay, nothing bad. Well, nothing wrong with that. Giant Germ will summon two more monsters, but my Valentine is dropping really low in life points. Honestly, she needs to use Harpy... Oh, Swallow's Nest. Okay. Swallow's Nest brings out the Harpy Queen, which can do... Oh! Ring of Destruction! She's left wide open! He has it. He has the game. Harpy's pet baby dragon saved her. <laughs> I can't believe a pet baby dragon is saving her. He can't beat a pet baby dragon. He stays... She stays alive. Destiny draw comes through. Monster Reborn comes through. Birdface is not even Harpy Queen. That was a terrible play. And obviously she's going to burn herself, but whatever. If he has any burn cards, he might as well activate them because they will win. Yep, there it is. Just desserts. Everybody. Yami Merrick takes out Mai just like in the anime and receives third place in our copycat tournament. My Valentine did really good today, but fourth place is all she could obtain. Yami Merrick takes third. But it is time, everyone. It is time. Are you guys ready? All right, so we have Yami Merrick here. Let me move him forward. You know, it's funny. I actually do have... Uh, I have an announcement to make today. I have a trailer for the next tournament on Thursday. I even made a trailer that I was going to release on YouTube. But if you guys want, because you guys have been so nice today with all these subs, I can release it live right after this duel, the trailer for the next tournament. But... If you guys don't actually care, we could just wait till YouTube. But it's your it's your call. It doesn't matter to me. All right, let me see here. I'm setting up the final duel of the day. Everybody, I want you to place your bets. This is the final bet of the day, and it's a damn good one. Celtic gifts again to going down swinging. Thank you so much. All right. Alright, it seems like people do want to see it. Okay. Everyone place your bet. This is the final bet of the day. Joey versus Yami Yugi. Here we go. I'm excited. Right now, I'm going to get the trailer onto my Twitch. I'm not going to play it. I'm just I'm getting it onto my Twitch. Remind me at the end of this duel if you would like to watch the trailer because I might forget if the duel is hype enough. Either way, let's go ahead and get going. Duelist Kingdom Finals, <laughs> but instead it's the Copycat Tournament Finals. Joey is going to try and obtain his first crown, but he has to take it from Yami Yugi, one of the strongest characters in the game. So, I'm going to and Joey starts with a decent start having back row and a monster and Raigeki says he doesn't have a monster but he still has back row and Breaker might get rid of said back row so that kind of sucks and Breaker pops call the haunted that's a big loss call the haunted could be used right now instead Joey's forced to take 1600 monster Reborn takes wyvern to make sure Joey can't bring it back Still, I hate that they do that on main phase too, but it's still a good play. And Joey plays a different Wyvern, but Dark Renewal says go to hell. Joey's in super big danger because now he's facing down the strongest cards Yugi has to offer, including a Raigeki. All right, Joey, what are you going to do? Where's your triple future fusion? I'm going to check the final bets of the day. The final bets of the day. Joey has 32% of the vote, but has the biggest bet of the day from Peace at 59k, 300 bets. And Yami Yugi has the second biggest bet from Ghost Wolf at 50k. As if it matters, because the duel is already over. Oh, it's not over. Joey has 200 life points. Joey gets 200 life points left to make a difference. Golden Dragon, thank you so much for subbing. And thank you so much for all your support. Well, this is for game, everybody. Let's see what happens. The game-winning attack will be Mirror Force, but guess what? Y Yugi still has Breaker. And Breaker could easily pop that last trap. He's not going to. 
Joey, do you have any monsters? Joey has no mo- oh, Wait, Red Eyes Wyvern activates to summon Red Eyes Wyvern. He still has a monster. But Yugi has no has never lost control of this duel. Heavy Storm! Joey loses Fairy Box, he loses TT, but he's still in the duel. I don't know what's in Joey's head. It might be Red Eyes and Summon Skull. And that's it. This duel is super over. Joey, you can't just win a tournament. Yugi shows you how. This is the winner. You can't stop the king of games. Joey Wheeler, your ass. <laughs> you are seriously ass. Everyone wanted to believe in him, but it is the king of games, everybody. Joey wasn't even supposed to be here. He just lucked out against Merrick. Are you guys ready? For a big announcement for the next tournament, Yugi Mudo is the winner of the copycat tournament, which is actually perfect for what is coming up. The next tournament is a big lead up, and I think I am ready to reveal what is happening. Obviously, I'm not dumb, and you guys aren't either. I've been releasing little hints that a big tournament is coming, right? This tournament I'm about to uh, to show you is not that big tournament, <laughs> but it is the lead up to it. So, without further ado, let us see the trailer to Thursday's tournament. gonna be a forbidden memories tournament come on <laughs> all right guys that is it on thursday we will be having a forbidden memories tournament and i am going to say right now everybody show up show up on thursday there are going to be five new characters five new characters made on for thursday's tournament and at the end of Thursday's tournament, I'm going to be announcing a project that I have been working on for the past two months. And that project will be something everybody's been waiting for. Thursday on YouTube, not Twitch. Thursday on YouTube, I will be streaming that tournament. The Forbidden Memories Tournament. It will be at 2 p.m. my time, same time that this tournament started. It will be a short tournament because Forbidden Memories did not have many characters and I only made five new ones. But it will be a good one. So, I'll see you all later. And make sure you watch the Thursday tournament. Even if you can't watch it live, watch it just so that you could see the tournament that is coming. Bye bye everybody.